We are live. What the show is going on? How are we all doing tonight? AJ, Juice, Bethany? Doing awesome. Doing great. Uh, it's starting a new week. It's a little bit late, but uh, excited for tonight's show. Yeah, so this is going to be real fun. We're going to jump right into it tonight. Uh, if you take a look behind Bethany and I, you uh, you see a caricature uh, picture that was drawn by one of our guests. He made this for us about uh, two years ago. So very happy to have him on the show, along with his buddy Joe. We got Tom and Joe, who made this awesome movie called American Caricature. We're going to talk about that right now. So let's just bring them right on to the show. My buddies, Tom, Joe, welcome to the show. Here we go. Oh, Tom. Here we are. And hey. Hey. How are we doing? Pretty good. You want the show tradition? I feel like we should. Cheers to our guests. Cheers. Absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. Yes, yes. Yes. Now it's a party. Now it's a party. There we go. Hi, professional environment. All right. I like your beer choice. I don't even know what it is. (laughs) (laughs) So, you like it? I like it. I, I literally, I don't know what's in it. I don't know what any of these ingredients on the label are. I can't describe the taste, but it's good. It's a fabulous review right there. Yeah. <laughs> you should like I saw one that beer. You, you should go into journalism. I think yeah. you missed the column. Just, uh, you, you into a glass, we need you to like... Oh, this is the one that has the, the strand of uh, marijuana in it, right? Yeah. And that explains a lot. Yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> I bought him a handful of beers for his birthday. It was uh, yesterday. Happy birthday. On, That's on happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, one of them is uh, from Single Cut, which do a lot of double dry hop IPAs, and most of them taste pretty good, but side by side, I can never tell the difference. This one blew me away a little bit. It's got pineapple turpin, which is like a hemp strain, and it's just really dank and juicy, and it's delicious. I figured Tom would like it. I did. When I got this, I'm like, I don't know. I don't what, work what for is, them, by the way. I just like, really what like is- it. I'm like, what is pineapple turpentine? What is this going to taste like? I have no idea. Uh, so I figured I'd break this one out and uh, 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 have it. To, I don't. I don't get to drink with my best friend all that often these days. So right, uh, yeah. I'm drinking the or beer anybody. that yeah, he got me. Right, yeah. Turpentine. It's not like made wine in the Simpsons, right? <laughs> so, so speaking of which, that's that's a great way to start off. The two of you have known each other for a very, very long time. Just go into like the background of what led to the idea to make the movie. Oh, well, I'll start in the third grade. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, I guess. So that one of uh, great story. Yeah, what do we lead with, Joe? You, it, it's kind of like there, there's two ends to this uh, this story, how, how it came together. Um, uh, well, where, yeah, on Tom's end, like post-college, worked at Cedar Point um, through probably a story he can tell better than I can, met our buddy Rob, who he worked with, and he travels the country with. I was kind of getting my culinary chops in, working restaurants, which kind of fell into my lap. I kind of fell in love with it. And at the time I would travel, which I love to do, and eat all this fun stuff, which I love to eat food all the time. And I was like, you know, texting him, like jokingly, like, oh, I'm so jealous, which I was there, blah, blah, blah. Well, I have a little film background at Cleveland State, and just I would jokingly say, one year I'm going to follow you around, one year I'm going to follow you around, and I'll just use that as an excuse to film. And then one year it happened. That's the long short of it, but that's kind of what happened. Yeah, and and uh, so more more on that. Like my background is, uh, I, I became a caricature artist in 2009, working at Cedar Point. Uh, and after a few years of that, I started traveling, doing festivals and stuff around the country, um, drawing people. And and uh, I go to a, a, a convention every year that's called uh, the ISCACON, the International Society of Caricature Artists, um, hosted every year. And uh, in 2014, I was uh, in Reno, Nevada, at the con jumps around from city to city every every year. Um, and I was in Reno, Nevada, and they had announced that the 2015 location would be uh, in Sandusky, Ohio. Uh, and so Joe and I are from Ohio. We're both from uh, the Cleveland area. I was living in Sandusky for a little while because that's where uh, Cedar Point is, uh, is situated. Uh, so when, when they announced it at the end of the con that the next one would be taking place in Sandusky, I called Joe. I said, uh, hey, you know, you, you've been looking for this project. You've been wanting to film something. I'll, why don't you come to the con and, and, um, in, in November next year uh, and, and film it for a week? And we can kind of show some outsiders uh, what, what happens at this place. Because uh, having attended for five years at that point, I've just uh, 
seen a lot of fun, wild stuff, and I believe I felt that there was uh, an interesting enough, unique subculture and community uh, doing all sorts of crazy styles of artwork that um, you know I'd never seen until I joined, and and people still are doing new stuff that blow me away. I just thought yeah. it'd be a really cool way to um, showcase the community and uh, really, like I said, just put some eyes. Um, on the character industry in a way that uh, most people aren't familiar with. Um, I myself wasn't even familiar about this con when I even started doing characters. I thought it was just you go and you draw with your staff and, and right. then the season ends and you go find a real job. And, uh, and, and a know. cool thing, too, about the convention um, is so when Tom first started really getting into it, his first time going was in Vegas. And I'd never been, Tom never been, and I was just like, well, you can't go without me, so I went with him. <laughs> Got a guest pass, met some people that I you know still know to this day and are friends with, and kind of went here and there, kind of just as a guest, and just I fit right in. Um, you guys would fit right in too if you like us. So I'm sorry about that. And you know, so after after Tom had texted me about Reno and or from Reno saying, you know, would you like to film Sandusky? I was like, yeah, sure. And then you know he was traveling back home, and I was working whatever restaurant at the time, and we're kind of both separately mulling it over, and we met up. Uh, for like dinner or something once he was back in town and we we're both like, I have this great idea. No, you go first. No, you go first. All right, you go first. And then Tom was talking I'm like, yep, we're going to do that. And that's exactly what I thought. And that's kind of how it was born. I just kind of followed Tom with our friend Rob and his company and, you know, on their little, their year long adventure. And in the way in between, we like kind of interviewed uh, what I like to call the rock stars of the organization, the, the bigger names, people that kind of have character as their base and like really did their career from there. Yeah. And uh, what, what ended up just being like, Hey, let's, let's shoot this thing in a year. Let's just point the camera and see what happens for like about four or five days and, and just compile it all turned into, Oh, we got a year. Let's see what we can do with that. Uh, and so, yeah, it became more of a, a road to the Iska Khan yeah, sort of story, where, as Joe said, he followed me on the road. But we also um, started out by, we said, well, you know, we can take the winter and go travel to Florida and visit some character artists I, I worked with in Tampa. Um, yeah. A couple uh, other names here and there that I know through the organization. And it just kind of kept snowballing from there. I said, well, we talked to these people. Now we got to talk to these people. And, and it wouldn't be balanced if we got the people from the East Coast. And, and then, you know, just get, get all, as much representation from the world as characters we could. Um, and then we decided, you know, we didn't really want it to make, make it super interview heavy, but we decided we wanted the insights from uh, uh, people from all sort of corners of this, uh, this art form. Uh, and so, yeah, it was, it was just kind of like, it was a constantly evolving thing right up until, uh, like literally like the, the day we had to like send it off for sound design. We we're like, we're like, all right, no more decisions. It's done. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a, that's like five other stories right there. <laughs> so there was a lot of the cutting room floor then. Yeah. Yeah. Th there might be a blooper reel one of these days. <laughs> oh, that's, that sounds amazing. Um, uh, actually one of my, one of my closest friends comes from a different portion of the street art world uh he's one of the uh the galaxy spray painters and he traveled oh, the country doing that that's so awesome. as uh as i was watching the documentary i had this this really cool connection with like the street art culture of it, especially the state fairs that kind mm -hmm. of thing you know i i used to sell paintings for him during a couple like weekends busking that kind of thing so it was there's this awesome connection that I had with it when I was watching it. That's awesome. So, like, you, you have an, an appreciation for for the hustle side of it. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, going into it, which is which is, I mean, it's all part of it. One of the things they teach you when you start to start to learn character is how to hustle. Like, it, it's yep. it's one thing to draw. You got to be able to sell these drawings. You got to get right. people to, to sit down and draw these things. So, um, yeah, it, it's uh, it's really there. There is a, a freedom and sort of like. Uh, uh, self-dependency that sort of comes from learning uh, probably any street art, anything you can just go out and do in a matter of minutes and sell for, you know, 20 bucks, you know, you just work at it, work at it till you get mm -hmm. that speed down. And then, uh, you know, you could do it anytime, anywhere, uh, you know, as long as you have the proper papers, but, uh, right. you know, even, even then, you know, who knows? Oh yeah. So uh, there's, there's this one thing, uh, when I first, first met my friend, his name's Cody, um, he, 
he mentioned that for spray paint, he would never call himself an artist until somebody stole one of his works. <laughs> so you know. uh, I have two questions for you. Uh, did you have a moment when you first called yourself an artist? And do you have uh, do you have a moment, like a great story about stealing one of your your caricatures? Uh, you know, I, I I'm still waiting to call myself an artist. To be honest, uh, it, it, you're you're constantly striving. Uh, but no, I, I've 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 learned to accept the term. I think uh, while I I do I do sort of agree with that philosophy. Um, I, I believe if if you want it and you're working towards it, you're you're an artist. You know, um, it, it might be a uh, bit of a, a disagreement on at what point you become a professional artist, but. Uh, I think it occurred to me that, you know, the, the moment I, probably my second year drawing caricatures at Cedar Point, working seasonally there, um, and I was able to uh, make uh, more money doing characters for a week than I did my weekly salary for my previous job, was the mm -hmm. moment that I'm like, okay, I can, I can do this. And so it wasn't necessarily a matter of was I an artist in that moment, but I realized I can support myself as an artist. I think that's uh, uh, the important, uh, an important distinction. Um, mm -hmm. As for people stealing artwork, I, I would, you know, nothing personally comes to mind. There have been a few instances where people just didn't pay for the drawings. And, and if you've seen the movie, we, we, you know, talked about what happens when someone rejects a drawing, but in, oh, in most of those situations, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we absolutely. And, um, when uh, we uh, uh, when that happens, they normally don't get the drawing. Uh, so uh, th there's uh, I, I don't have anything, but what what does happen in the caricature community a lot? Um, you see it a lot in in sort of like I'm not going to call out anyone specifically, but in in, in certain regions, um, you'll see some like street vendors and stuff like that, and their samples on their booth will be those of professionally illustrated like. 10 hour paintings that were used in magazines or book covers of celebrities and they're just ripped from the internet and slapped on a sign. And that's usually the point where we as a community joke, Oh, you made it, you know, uh, like it, it's happened to, uh, Tom Richmond, uh, Joe Bloom, uh, Jason Seiler. Like that's why we had him in our movie. Cause we're like, you guys are the ones getting your signs ripped off. <laughs> You're the ones that people, uh, uh, admire. You're the pinnacle. So that's, that's sort of when we looked at it. If you go see someone who can't, draw worth a damn, but they have someone else's artwork on their booth. Like that's, it's, it's just kind of a running gag oh. in our community. It's like art plagiarism. It, it, yeah, exactly. I mean, they're not selling the pieces, but they are saying, Hey, look what I can do. Well, yeah. They get a stick figure. Yeah. The idea is like, I can do this. <laughs> I, really can. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I will say um, as someone who, well, both of us obviously living in Orlando, very involved in like, the theme park community, hospitality community, I think that's the thing that I was kind of most drawn to about the the film. Like it's state fairs, it's theme parks, like that's where a lot of people get their start, where they do most of their work. And, and those rejection things, so I was like, no one, and I say this with love, but people at state park or at state parks, at state fairs and at theme parks, they're tired, they're cranky, like they they came there to have the best day ever. And then like things went crazy. So I was thinking of like, my experiences and like being yelled at. And I can't imagine like putting my time and effort into making a piece of art for someone and then them just being like, Wah! so I feel like <laughs> that was the part that I was like, oh, that like yeah. sucks and I would hate that. <laughs> so that was the part that definitely was the most intriguing to me, knowing theme park people. Like I was like, oh man, that's, yeah. cool. I, could, I would never I've have like, those people do that. <laughs> yeah. I've been to I've Cedar Point, by the about. way. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Awesome. My my yeah. brother and his wife went to the uh, state university, so there was a couple times over trips to go visit them that uh that we kind of made that drive over there. So when they oh, met, you might have crossed paths with me. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that I was, I was uh, there. Yeah, oh nine to two thousand fourteen. Yeah. Okay, so oh nine to fourteen. Uh, he was, uh, yeah, he was in Nebraska by then, back home. But uh, yeah, there was. Uh, a, I'm, I'm familiar with the grounds a little bit. It's kind of a kind of a cool, fun local place. That, I that, loved it. I mean, on my bucket list to go to. I've never been there. You never been? Oh man! Like I, I grew I up in my backyard. Guys. 
Uh, yeah. So me, me and Jim were privileged. We, we would go every year. Um, and then I just got it to, it to a point where I was just like, I just want to work here and I might as well drop pictures. But, you know, yeah. if they want me to sweep up garbage, I'll do that too, just because it's a cool place. <laughs> the bad part of it being in your backyard is like you go to other theme parks or, or other like places for the roller coasters specifically, you mm-hmm. go on like, their big bad one. You're like, what was that? That was a kitty ride. Right. And we were so spoiled and like jaded because we go on like these record breaking things. Like, yeah, I got a pass. I go like five times a year. Yeah, I, I went on the best roller coaster I'm ever going to ride 20 years ago. Nothing's topped it. Like, that's what Cedar Point does to you. <laughs> but, uh, so, so you're lucky you waited. Uh, you know, you can have your yeah. mind blown uh, after you've tried everything else. <laughs> I do have to ask, since obviously a lot of this uh, film does chronicle um, going to different state fairs and stuff like that, what is your favorite fair food? Oh, man. Ooh. <laughs> uh, Ooh. Joe, you, you've, been, you've been to quite a few of them. Uh, what, what's, so I, I, can, I will have an answer as someone who, who works there for like two weeks straight and, and uh, travels to all of them. Joe can kind of answer as someone who's got maybe a little bit more of than the average person's like insight. So, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I first, my first answer for like any fair is like, when I go there, I got to get a corn dog. Right. That's like a classic. It's like going to a movie theater, getting popcorn. I mean, you could have nachos, you could have both. Like you got to start with the corn dog and I'll judge it, you know, based on other fairs. But like, when you go to like, you get to be able to travel different state fairs, you get to try like the local, like niche things. Like, you know, you go to uh, in Texas. There was like a little stand with fried etouffee, or uh, anything in the South will have like a plethora of different kinds of barbecue, which is mm-hmm. great. Um, man, and, and I'm more of a savory over sweets person, but I mean, deep fried Oreos. How, how you say no to that? We saw that in the movie. Fried Oreos. Oh yeah, <laughs> that fried Oreo we'll, scene. We'll I shouldn't have watched that at midnight. Like, Make really happy in some kind of way. <laughs> right, yeah, that was one that wasn't gonna end up on the cutting room floor. We're like, this this whole movie is hinged exactly. around the scene where I eat an Oreo. Uh, <laughs> I more people probably bought fried Oreos over characters, but it was worth it. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll tell you my my favorite food. So my first year doing these fairs, uh, I just tried to eat everything that was as bad for you as possible. Just get it all out in one fell swoop. And then uh, then I realized I no longer fit into my jeans by the end of the season. And I was like, okay, next year I'm going to try to find normal food at the fair, which is much harder. But uh, it, as, as Joe said, um, down south, we do a couple of fairs in Texas, the, the one you saw in the movie. Um, mm-hmm. that, that fair in particular has some of my favorite food because you, you go there, you get uh, authentic uh, Mexican food, you get um, oh, yeah. Cajun, you get uh, barbecue, Tex-Mex. Like it, it's yeah. this whole like Eastern melting pot. Like, of, that kind of yeah. picture with the Cajun, the Mexican Right, it, it's it's um, yeah. Texas, but it borders Louisiana and isn't isn't far from from Mexico. So it's, right. you got all those cultures and cuisines kind of coming together, nice. and so um, I I love just kind of going through that. And I got the stuff that I hit, which is uh, um, you know uh, barbecued uh, pork kebabs, which is if, if you imagine a shish kebab but without any vegetables, that's what that is. Um, <laughs> They yeah. have, uh, there are no vegetables in Texas. I don't know if you knew this, but there are no vegetables in Texas. <laughs> yeah. uh, not at the fair anyway, uh, uh, or at any of the restaurants by our hotels either. Um, and they have street corn. But Oh, yeah, they do have the street corn. It's just slathered in mayonnaise. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, and, and oh. yeah. I'm with Joe on the corn dogs. Uh, I usually got to get a corn dog once per fair. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, every every fair I go to has its thing, and sometimes the people are right, but other times I'm just like, yeah, I've had better. Like there are the things where people will like stand in line for that one event's donut or something like that. They'll wait for like a whole day to get the donut, and I'm like, I'm like, eh, these donuts up the road are a little bit better, or <laughs> you know. So I like I know the ones that that are are a little bit a little bit smaller, a little less populated, but I'm like, I'm like, you guys are doing the good stuff, and so I try to go to those, and and it's it's. Hard to recount them all, but uh, I've, I've just I've refined my carny palate, is what I like to say. There was, uh, I think at the Ohio State Fair, don't they have like the mashed potato Sunday? Oh yeah, yeah, yep. with the mashed potatoes with a with a cherry tomato on top and gravy running down the side. It's just mashed potatoes, but they call it a Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> 
it, that's like cafeteria food tricks. Really. Yeah, yeah. Nothing special, but I'm just like, hey, this is this is nutritional. I think <laughs> this is cute. It's causing it deep going. Right? That well, that's the thing too. Um, you're, you're working at a fair for 12 hours a day. Um, you know, you're lucky if you can find a place that serves any kind of like breakfast food, but then you got, you know, two other meals you got to get through. So unless you're packing your lunch, which sometimes I do, but other times it's like, okay, I got to find something that is actually going to carry me through 10 hours of drawing. Right. Yeah. You know, well, sometimes I don't even get that break to go get food. So I got to make sure that I, yeah. I, I pack it in. That's like something I never thought of, I guess, like in, until like we were Watched watching it. it and there's that one that's like, well, I just needed to go get this real quick for, you know, and then I, I got to go back and draw. And I was like, oh, yeah, like, I guess you're not like a having a lot of time to eat. B, it's all fair food that is around you, which is not usually the most nutritional. And you're working <laughs> long ass days. Like if you're working a 12 hour day, like you need. And, I, and if you're not drawing, you're not making money. Right. Yeah, exactly. You don't and, want to be wasting too much time. What happens? It's not like, you know, we don't have like any kind of union or anything and we don't. Right. So there's, there's, it's like, we're self-employed. We got to get the money while, while the people are there and mm -hmm. we only have, you know, a weekend to a week and a half to earn the income. So, right. uh, you know, if, if you take too long of a break now, I don't mind taking a break because I'm just like, you know what? <laughs> I need to be, I love taking breaks, but you know, I also don't want to leave the stands untended. I don't want to leave uh, yeah. my, my coworkers slumped. But uh, you know, you got to be aware. Like you got the whole like idea behind the movie. Tom's like, yeah, it probably works with me too much. Film me. I'll like walk off and do stuff. <laughs> yeah, I had to yeah, come so I can so take breaks. <laughs> We're making a movie. You guys, you guys can handle it. No, it's it's. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it's. The, the structure is such that uh, we're our own bosses, essentially, and we got to be able to manage our own time and our own um, breaks and, and how we do this. So there's nothing saying that you need a, a dedicated hour lunch break or anything. It's just right. if you get the time, you go grab it and you come back and you keep drawing. You know, it's it's uh, you know, it's 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 it, it can be a bit of a workout. But, you know, some days you, you get to, are a little bit more chill than others. Uh, some days are absolutely insane. But mm -hmm. uh, those are the things that you kind of you come back and you talk about and you you laugh off later. Um, and then, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of what it's all about. It's the nature of the beast. Juice, what do you got to say? <laughs> yeah. What? Uh, yeah. So normally for those days, are you like all like in a group? Cause what we saw in the doc, the affairs at the doc, um, there was a bunch of you as like three or four, Character caricature artists going at the same time. So normally, is it like that, or is it some of these fairs are you just by yourself? Uh, yeah, it's it's a little bit of both. Um, some events are big enough that we have a staff of four or five people um, under one tent, uh, and and we can all be working simultaneously if the if the hours are busy enough. Now we we do sometimes work out shifts. Like we'll be like, okay, well, is the, the morning will be slow or, or the evening will be busy or whatever. And, and, you know, so-and-so can take half a day off, but usually it's just like, come, you can, you know, you can have a half day off, but come in if you want basically. And so, um, yeah, some days we'll have multiple people working just to, um, just based on the attendance, uh, other days, uh, some events I've just done by myself cause they're a little small, you know, pop-ups at a park somewhere. Um, and if you have two people there, we're both going home broke because, you know, we're, we're, we're splitting all the, the, the staff. So um, it, it just depends on the attendance in the previous year's, um, like, outlook, basically. It's, it's We make projections and we're like, okay, well, this one we definitely need to be staffed with this many people. So when we go to Texas, we go with a crew of typically four people, um, sometimes five. Sometimes we bring in some guests from the surrounding area. The Ohio State Fair, we usually have a core staff of four and then bring in a few others on the weekends. So in like any given fair day, like how many pictures do we, would you say you draw in a 10 to 12 hour? Um, on average, I think, uh, you know, I, I was trained to do a lot more than I actually do. But again, it, it's kind of like I've kind of learned how to pace myself in the crowd. So it's I, I can I maybe do about. 20, if I do 20 drawings a day, that usually includes couples and families all drawn together. So we usually like count them as like faces, not whole drawings. Um, so it varies. It's it's usually somewhere between 35, 40 people being drawn in a, in a, in a good, uh, good day. And, and it can be more than that uh, if it's crazy busy. Um, and, you know, on slower days, you know, you know, maybe you're lucky to draw 10 people, but, you know, every little bit counts. 
Uh, so it, yeah, it just it just really depends on the day and the fair. And, and what, what's really something is you go to a big fair like like uh, one of the state fairs, mm-hmm. and uh, you really start to panic if the people aren't showing up or showing up to the booth. You're like, what's right. wrong? What's going on today? Why am I not drawing anyone? But you know, in reality, it's like. 90 degrees out and the forecast was a, a chance of storms and so people are at home or they're hiding out in the ac so uh there's a lot of variables and i just i learned not to beat myself up about it i'm just like i'll take it as it comes you know i'll, I'll work to get them into the booth but uh if they're not showing up you know there's always tomorrow i will say that was like my entire life growing up in florida i'm always told when i'm cold that it's not really cold outside so <laughs> the documentary the other night there's the one bit um it's one of the first days of the ohio state fair and it's like oh it's 85 today it's really warm and i was like that's not hot. I'm like, oh, like is that what people feel like when i say that it's cold outside i'm like that's not that like they all like come on people in ohio suck it up like, that's not <laughs> yeah no i i, I get I've, I've lived in florida myself but only only visiting to work at the theme parks in the winter so i haven't hit peak florida you know living down there but um <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I understand where you're coming from on both angles. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh my god, look at that must be. I was like, I finally had my moment where I could be like, wait a minute, <laughs> not hot. I'm like, I'm always hot all the time, which today it was very cold for a Floridian. Um, so I've been cold all day, but I'm sure anyone from Ohio would come down and be like, You call this cold? Like that's funny. I yeah, am we, from we Wisconsin, got- I can guarantee it's not cold. <laughs> yeah, we we got about uh, uh, a foot of snow weighing down our tree branches right now. But yeah, no, wow. Florida's cold. Florida's <laughs> I do also have a weird technical question. Speaking of the Ohio State Fair, um, that I, I wanted to be obviously since y'all made the movie, you can answer this. But I was like, did y'all like do a fancy helicopter shot there? Like, oh yeah, the I'm curious and, like, the city? Because I was like, wait a minute, like, how did they get that shot? So I just had to ask how that uh, came to be. Turn it over to the cinematographer. <laughs> Legit in a helicopter. <laughs> we, yeah. Uh, yeah. Nice. How, how did, like, did you like hire the helicopter to get those shots? Like, was that the intention? You're like, oh, well, we're in a helicopter. Let's do this. <laughs> Technically, I mean, we, we don't have a pilot's license, if that's what you're asking. <laughs> uh, so a little behind we the, the license, yeah. and then we got the shot. <laughs> yeah. We're that committed. It was worth those six months of training. Uh, no, so, uh, you know. Got the laser surgery, just correction for vision. Those, those classes are cosmetic. Oh, right. oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, but truth be told, we are at the state fair, and they offer a... Uh, you know, you pay for your ticket, and they fly you around the city. And we said, "Why not? What's the worst can happen? We can't use the footage. It sucks. Who cares? Look, um, can we bring our camera?" Yeah. They're like, "I don't care." Yeah, we jump <laughs> down there. And we're like, hey, can we bring our camera, and they're like, "Sure, whatever." <laughs> All right, cool. And that's what we did. There you go. Uh, nice. Um, real quick, uh, Jock, uh, Jake Yacovetta did donate $10 to the Streamlabs. All donations to our channel do go to Kevin Smets to help hashtag smash cancer. Uh, but Jake said that he's definitely going to check it out. Uh, and thank you guys for coming on for your insight into the process. Nice. Uh, oh, that's awesome. Real quick, Action Army salute to Jake. Everything he does, great support of all of everything in this <laughs> industry going on. So. Yeah, I don't, I uh, I don't know, but I'm all for about uh, smashing some cancer. So, Fuck oh, that. yeah, yeah, yep, go Jake. So, uh, Jake did bring something up there. I was gonna wait a little longer oh, yeah. already. Um, so, uh, we actually were going to ask you, Tom, would you like to draw a caricature of the stream? Hashtag no, and I, I'll commission you for that, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for us to use for our socials, yeah, absolutely. Nice. I'll talk to you about it afterwards, but we 100% would like to ask you, um, because right now, literally everything we're doing is written on a whiteboard. Which yeah. Is- yeah. <laughs> it is hey, hey. hyper professional. Go you got to start out. somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But, yeah, uh, and then we, laid out, we laid out our movie on a foam core like poster board, so <laughs> I, I know how it goes. That was after four years of not doing that. Yeah, oh, right. <laughs> Really, we should probably really structure this thing. Yeah. The next question I was going to ask is like, from moment of conception to first screening, how much time overall was oh, that? Good question. Ooh. Ooh. Um, Too much. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think overall is well, it was a five year journey. I don't know. Wow. 
mm-hmm. uh, come coming up with like the, the original text message from Reno. Hey, come shoot the con. Cool. I'll Dude, be that's there. by the way, that's that's almost a year ago. Like a, a week or so out from a year ago, because it was late November. I would have called you in 2014. So that's yeah. uh, that's almost six years ago that we we had the the seed planted. Yeah. So that and then we honestly didn't do a lot of um, pre-production for the fact that like things happen like right away. Mm-hmm. Like we like Tom said, we decided to go film in February, and he was out of town till about December. Then the holidays with family. About a month of pre-production, it was like laying ideas out, and then like, all right, let's just start interviewing and go from there. And it literally just it started snowballing, almost out of control. We're like, okay, we're gonna go to Texas, but before we go to Texas, I'm gonna go to Florida. If you can get off work, sure. And I was like, no, I don't think I can do that. And then a day like today happened in Ohio, where it just snowed like three feet of snow. I'm like, yeah, I'm calling off work. I'm going to Florida. (laughs) (laughs) We got some interviews. And then once March hit, like we were supposed to go down there to Texas and come back. Uh, but then we stopped along the way and picked up some more interviews. Like with Texas, I was in and out of three different airports, flying in, flying out, flying in. And I drove up with Tom and Rob Similar all times. working like my 55 salary kitchen job. Like, right. I don't know how I did it, but we did it. But part of the reason it took so long is because of, at the time, my my different kitchen jobs or Tom still did this, like the, you know the travel every year. So most of the time, you weren't even like really working with each other until like the winter month. So it was like editing, but I'm not working too much. Got a better job, and then the editing process got faster. And then Tom took some some time off, uh, just like smaller events the last year, and we actually like went to a coffee shop every week had meetings we're in the same house on the same computer editing together, like just over each other's shoulder and just we we put a goal. Like it has to be done or we're just going to be done with it. It's going to be done either way. Let's do it. Let's Mm -hmm. put a fire under our pants. And yeah. And and, uh, the first screening was, uh, what what was it? July, June of last year. And this, this was a test screening. This was basically Uh, test. screening. uh, Yeah. yeah, Well, this, Uh, this was, so uh, yeah, we, we had a few people, a um, few close friends and, and uh, uh, film scholars, um, filmmakers and such, if you if you want to call them <laughs> scholars. The, the closest we know to film scholars. Anyway, uh, no, we, we, some, some, some people in, in the film community, the local film community, some people who are just friends, some people in the character community sat down and watched it and uh, gave us pointers on our first rough cut. And then we, uh, we passed the second cut along to a few other people. Um, to view uh, digitally and then give us feedback. And then, yeah, our, our final cut was screened on, uh, it was November, what, November 19th, right? Uh, 20, 20, 2019. Was it? No, it was the 22nd. It was the 22nd. Uh, but what we, what, because we set this goal because we knew that the, the, the con we were going to, the character con we were going to uh, last year was at uh, the Graceland, the guest house at Graceland hotel in Memphis. And they have an in-house 400 seat, like 7.1 surround sound movie theater. And so when I found that out, I said, uh, okay, Joe, we have a deadline. You know, we're going to show this at the character (laughs) convention. Uh, We're going to show it to the character artist who starred in the movie. And we're going to show it in a movie theater uh, on Elvis's property. And so that's ultimately what we ended ended up doing. That was the first screening of the film. So that was was a really good experience. Yeah, that that was pretty awesome. Because one of the things I was like, you know, it took us so long, but we kept having, like, I guess, personal goals. Um, you know, first and foremost, you know, we knew what it was. It was out of pocket, on a borrowed camera, and all that good stuff. And, you know, at the end of the day, I'm like, all right, we have to be happy and proud of it. And then, you know, after everybody else, I mean, in a way, you know, we still had that punk rock kind of, like, vibe. Like, you know, it's, it's us versus them. Mm-hmm. But we still want to see it successful. But as long as we are happy then it's successful at that level and then the next level which i was really nervous about is when we showed the community like you know town was a part of it you know i guess i am kind of adopted into it too i can't say that i'm not but tom was like I mean, he's the president right now so like they they love tom and i was really nervous showing they love you more at them because <laughs> like yeah if they hate it they're not going to blame tom they're going to blame the guy with the camera and the editing like 
<laughs> so I was really nervous about that, and none of that happened. And then, you know, we showed friends and family, and so that was the next year is like, do other people that don't know what's going on, do they accept it? Do they understand? And is it something they're going to get, like, et cetera, et cetera? Well, and like, for, for my experience watching the documentary, um, I just have to say it was like, it's something that for this year is kind of perfect. Like they, you, you showcase so many people that are uh, so kind and intelligent and it's just such a positive watch. It goes by really slowly. Do you guys realize that you created the exact opposite of Tiger King? <laughs> <laughs> you can, you uh, no. can. I didn't even realize we'd be competing with Tiger King, uh, but no, that's, that's great to hear. That's that's the that's a new tagline. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't think there's any murder. Um, I've not, well, there was almost attempted murder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we, true story. We almost took us down a much darker path, and we decided no, we, we need to make this a feel good feel good movie. Yeah. So there was a darker point because like. There's there's all these moments like I love the moments when you show people their characters and you see their entire like their selves just kind of melt and then laugh into themselves yeah. like that's such a beautiful moment to me. But were there some negative rejections that you guys didn't put in? Uh, no. So the problem is, um, so we didn't get any like on camera, like oh no, I don't like that. You know, take this and throw it away. Um, the closest one I think we got on camera, which we didn't get on camera was uh, when Tom tells his story that happened the night before and he shows the picture and crumbles it up. Yeah. And then the one where like uh, at the Ohio state fair, Tony's like really exhausted and he didn't really get a rejection. They rejected like his price points. Right. But my theory behind that is, you know, we had papers for people to sign. We had signs posted up, you know, you might be on camera um, when people had their picture drawn, we like, hey, can you sign this release form? We wanted to do this for the documentary. There were a couple, uh, couple customers that accepted the, the the caricature, but I think by their body language, there's at least one I can think of that I don't think they liked it. But because they're on camera, like they know I could be in the film, which they are, and I don't want to be the bad guy. So that's my personal theory on that. Well, well, and that's like that's a cheers to you, Joe, because. Like pretty much every single like reaction that I saw was like there was something unique and pure, and I kind of felt like I was getting a picture that like a view that only the artists got to see of yeah. the the subject's reaction. Mm -hmm. I tried. What was your favorite was reaction? Oh, there's some good ones. It's so uh, hard. On what the. The one like the well, I really like the one with the kid, the the babies, where they had the, the ro real rosy cheek babies with the two ladies. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. Yeah. really good. Uh, what was the one? What's there was that it? one older guy who was talking about like how he seemed like he'd been the subject of quite a few, and he's oh, every, <laughs> it didn't feel like <laughs> yeah, his that, first time. He made to the uh, the colonel. The yeah. Big, yep. Yep. Yeah. Big, I, big Bruce. That's one of my favorites. Yeah, that, like, yep. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> that gets a laugh every time we screen it. I, I, I love laugh every time. Yeah. That that felt like the old guy in the back of the stand-up comedy room. Like it just ah. <laughs> uh. Man, we gotta get him on the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys have his number? <laughs> Probably on the release form somewhere. Hey, <laughs> that's totally that's legal. A collection of art, like and him describing each of them. That would be wonderful. That's like six, six years of paperwork. I don't want to dig through. <laughs> that's fair. That's very fair. Yeah, he, he clearly said he liked it. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I like that one, and my my tied for first um, was uh, the guy in the purple shirt that says "Cool Kids." Uh, it's not that one shown in the film, but he laughs. He's got this really good chuckle. That laugh goes on for like no joke five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and like, in, the, in the trailer at the end, like it's over black, and like he saw that, he like messaged Tom. I think he's like, "Oh my god, I made the film." And Tom's like, "No, you made the film." <laughs> 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 yeah, those two are like my favorite because it's like one. They're so opposite. One's just like he laughs and laughs and laughs, and that was his first caricature, so he like loved it. And then the other guy who had many is just like, yeah, that's cool. Like, so <laughs> you, yeah. you know, when, when 
Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, go on. I was saying, like, he was just so chill about it. Like, he's like, the same my first rodeo. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. My other favorite part, though, is the exact opposite. The, the collaboration story with yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, yeah. That up. oh yeah. that hurt my heart. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I want to just tell you something about that. Like the story itself was, uh, you know, we we interviewed um, Chris. Corey. Uh, wait, who, who did we interview? Corey. Corey. We interviewed Corey Lally first because he was one of our our uh, colleagues in in uh, Tampa. Uh, yeah. yeah, we were, we went to Florida. He was one of the first people interviewed. He told us the story. I'm like, okay, well, if we if we meet up with those other two guys, we'll get it. And then uh, we went to Pennsylvania and we interviewed Chris Chua. And we're like, all right, now we gotta get Nate's side of the story. And, yeah, and, and uh, we we were thwarted by a freak snowstorm that year when we tried to go see him in, in Columbus. He was visiting family, and then I, I uh, like, know. okay, because he's he's from L.A. or, or not L.A. Um, um, uh, San uh, San. San Diego. Um, and so we're like, well, we don't have the budget to go to the West Coast this year, so we'll see if he comes to us. Um, uh, we, we ended up just tracking him down at the next year's convention after we were already, like, working on the edit. We're like, we're like dude, we need to hear this story from you. Right. Uh, and then uh, Joe was able to edit it all together so it flowed seamlessly because they all told the same story, and that was the plan. We're like, we're like we want to hear it in their own words and then piece it together chronologically. And then I'm like, you know, this needs a little something different because this is this was the only sequence in the movie that was, you know, three minutes or so of just people talking directly to the camera. Uh, yeah. and, and we didn't want that. We wanted the interviews to be supplemental to the visual. You know, we want people to see the drawings and see what we're talking about uh, rather than being told what the experience is. So we're like, we, we need to we need to pin down some animation. And so. My buddy Kevin, who uh, I worked with at Bush Gardens in Tampa, um, his his daughter, uh, who was 14 at the time, uh, 13 or 14, was uh, posting these killer animations to her YouTube page, and I was like, I was like, uh, I was like, Kevin, do you think she would like to uh, do this segment in our movie? Like, I think she's got the chops, and and you know, she was totally, uh, you know, blown away that we would we would even request that. But I'm just like, you know, uh, you're. Your stuff is really good. Like I, I'm not gonna sh like sugarcoat it. It's like we'll, we'll do this. We'll pay you to do it. Um, and and she came through with those animations. Uh, and then uh, you know we, we put some sound effects to them and, and handed off to our sound design guy and and really clinch it together. But um, I, I was really excited that I could you know give her a, a, a stepping stone and hopefully um, you know uh, hopefully it's it's a path she pursues. And if not, it's at least a a, a reaffirmment that she can she can do, you know, right. the stuff that she sets yeah. herself to do. And to kind of like layer on top of that, um, go back a little bit when we were talking to Corey, like Tom said, the I remember the first thing, like I said, three, I already have like a vision in my head for this. Like I know what I want to do with it. And originally I wanted to get all three of them cut how it is, but like completely animated. And then we realized how much that was going to cost. Like, well, we need sound more than animation to get the full thing <laughs> animated. To be like, like, no, with the sound, we, you know, we didn't have the gear because we were traveling. Half the time we didn't have lights because you can't take anything on an airplane. So mm -hmm. I mean, like, all of it was rough. I was like, well, you know, yeah, let's nix that idea. And then the Lily Gray thing came up. I'm like, that's awesome. And I was about about that age in high school when I kind of took my first film class, kind of fell in love with this. So I was like, a little kinship. They're like, oh. Wish I got paid some money to do a film. <laughs> right. That's awesome that we can like make that a stepping stone and hopefully a passion. Like it was kind of cool. And this was this was uh, a couple weeks out from final edit too. So we're just yeah. like, let's let's see if she can come through. You know, yeah. if she doesn't, it, we go ahead without animation. If she does, then yeah, and what, and, what it was, but it like adds a little flair. <clears> and something yeah, she delivered and then segment. segment. <laughs> Excuse me. So it makes that segment even more special. It's not just one story told fluidly as one person would be telling it, but cut up with three and three people, then you get a little bit of that like flair to kind of like add to the humor, mm. like little punctuation marks almost. Oh yeah. It, it kind of, it, it feels natural. It Good. feels <laughs> like you can tell the work went into it, but it feels like it just kind of flows naturally throughout. So wow. yeah, that's awesome. That's, that's what we're after. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I gotta ask a little bit about the um, the convention. Yeah, yeah. I love that whole scene. I've been trying to talk um, about the convention. <laughs> convention looks like the most like positive place in the world to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty uh, sweet. 
I mean, I'm, I'm a non-character artist, and I've gone to, oh, God, almost, what, 10 now almost? Maybe maybe, maybe not that many. Yeah, I think I just went yeah. to my 10th. So, so you, 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 yeah, you, you've been to maybe half those, maybe maybe just over, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, uh, and, and that's either as a spectator or we hired you to film the seminars or you're filming the documentary um, the at this point. Best. This year he was a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky yeah. Card sponsored the IskaCon, and we actually we we uh, we held it virtually this year. Uh, we we had to do our con uh, in in the uh, the era of COVID, and so uh, we figured out how to throw it together using Discord, and uh, you know uh, gave people the help where they needed to get you know connected and, and online and, and doing this sort of stuff, and uh, you know it, it was uh, it was an overwhelming success given what we were up against, but. Um, that was awesome. But yeah, I've been, um, the, the conventions, uh, you know, I wanted to uh, showcase the conventions. Oh, hey, there's a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> she has entered the stream. She also wanted to know about the conventions. Cheers, puppy. <laughs> I wanted, you know, this, so, so the con was something that when I first went to it, I was completely overwhelmed and blown away and uh, didn't know what to make of it, but I, I just remember being so inspired and so um, full of new energy that I, I knew, like, I'm like, okay, this is this is what I want to keep doing. You know, I want to go next year. I want to keep doing this. I want to keep going these kinds. I want to keep meeting these people. I want to keep learning how to develop this skill. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, when it, when it came time to show that in the film, I wanted to make sure that the experience felt as frenzied and chaotic and uh, uh, inspirational as I found it. Like I wanted you all to see it through my lens. Uh, it was literally Joe's lens, but uh, you know, it was, it was uh, from, it was from the perspective of, of what the convention feels like to me. Um, and, and again, that's not taking anything away from Joe, but like I, I'm, I'm, I've always been deeply rooted in it and I've seen it from a perspective of an attendee and as an organizer. Uh, and so forget, not to cut time off, don't forget, this was like the base of like the idea of American character was let's go film the convention in Sandusky. And I, at the time was a guest to one of them. Like I previously said the Vegas one and I was in and out cause I wasn't competing. I just wanted to hang out with Tom. Then I would go sightsee and like, you know, I've been to a lot of other ones to film the convention or, um, you know, I filmed the seminars and it's a hired gig, which is awesome. When I'm not doing that, I'm hanging out with all these cool, amazing people who like are in my cell phone as you know friends, and I call or invite over to my house on holidays and stuff like that. So, like, it is a pretty cool thing. Um, I you know that's, again, let's cut you off. Time, but I just wanted to like remember everyone. Like, it started the movie started as like just a convention. Yeah, exactly. I, I really wanted to like showcase this community of people that mean a lot to Tom, and now like it branches out to even me. Yeah, and uh, you know. For me, you know, you, you'll, you'll, it, it's almost cliche at this point, but it's, it's like a family reunion. Like just yeah. imagine, you know, you have a, a group of loved ones you only get to see once a year and there's about 200 of them and you all get together and, and, you know, you, you just catch up and reminisce and you push each other to be better than you were when you walked in. Uh, and so it's a big learning experience. It's a big, uh, uh, you know, just, um, it's this big, friendly, creative, inspiring atmosphere. Um, and, and I always leave it exhausted. And then within a few days, I'm just like, I want to do that again. I can't like, yeah. I miss it. Like that energy is something that is so hard to capture outside of that, that venue. And not everybody draws the whole time. Like people literally just go to hang out. Uh, sometimes people who live in warmer, you know, client, uh, you know, climates like Florida or California, they draw the whole year round. So that's almost like a vacation. Um, so they'll just hang out and drink. They'll go out to restaurants, bars. We'll play hacky sack at three in the morning, like just random stuff. Um, it's just some people are drawing, they're competing. Some people don't like competition or don't like winning things and get nervous. And they just draw just for themselves, but they just are there to hang out. And it's just this whole, like 2,200 things are going on at once, but everyone's going on at the same time. Yeah, it's definitely a different experience depending on what you bring to it. You know, you, you, yeah. you get out of it what you put in. You know, you get out of it, uh, out of it what, what attitude you walk in with. Um, yeah. And so, like, my first year, I didn't know what to expect. And I, I just, I kind of shrugged it off. I said, okay, I'm here, but I'm, 
I was in Las Vegas and I, I took Joe and, and a couple other friends and I said, we're going to go see Las Vegas. I'm going to occasionally pop in here and draw. And I realized uh, how, you know, I love Vegas, but I, I just realized that like, okay, next year I got to be serious about just being in that ballroom and drawing the whole time and just learning everything and not shrugging it off because uh, it, it really has been an invaluable experience to me. Are people that are competing, like it appeared like in the documentary that they straight up just like slept in that ballroom. Do they just straight up sleep in that ballroom? Some do. Yeah. If they sleep at all. That was yeah. really, Man, yeah, that was intense. <laughs> and that looks yeah. Like that you know, uh, I, I like my sleep, so I, I get a couple hours in every night at the con, but uh, some people, uh, you know, I don't know if they're not booking rooms or what, but like sometimes they just, they're like, well, I'm just going to get my sleep and, and a couple naps here and there and then it's back to work. And uh, I'm never going to win anything there because I'm not that dedicated, but uh, <laughs> I, I admire the hell out of it. <laughs> I do want to know who won the Golden Nosy this year. This yeah. year, there, well, we did not, because we held it virtually, we, we actually did not do the Golden Nosy. We Man. thought it would, it would, um, there were too many variables uh, that right. we could not control. So we thought it would give some an unfair advantage and some a disadvantage. So um, we're holding off until the next in-person con. Uh, we did hold a caricature of the year and that was won by a previous golden nosy winner. Uh, he won in 2018 at our San Diego con. His name's uh, Daniel Stieglitz uh, from uh, Germany. Uh, and he did a drawing and a pen and ink drawing of my face but it was all computer monitors and, and computer cables making up my hair and, and everyone who was attending the con in those monitors are popping out of them. And it was, yeah, it, it was insane. <laughs> yeah. It, he does it was wild. Stuff every year though. He'll do like one massive piece with as many people and it's, it's crazy. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, and actually, uh, uh, yeah. Is there, is there like a link for the site like related to the con that I can, Put yeah, that, go uh, go to that. go to mailboxmayhem.com and that actually is is kind of like a culmination of uh, this year's con and, and sort of award winners and stuff like that. Um, it says here I got a screen share option. Do you guys want to see this drawing just here? I can I can maybe pop that up if that'll work. And yeah, we can try it. Let's try. Yeah, let's see. I'll I'll click it. See what happens. Screen sharing is the easiest with two monitors. Works best on a good computer. Use Chrome if you want to. Eh, don't really. Sure. Share screen and <laughs> let's try this. Drum roll, please. Oh, oh, I see, I see. So uh, screen one, screen two. Here for the drum roll, juice. So this might, let me do, let me pull this down onto screen two. <laughs> I do have two screens. So they, they got some some weird rules that I'm not familiar with, but uh, we'll, we'll make this work. We, we are not familiar, are they? All right. Uh, let's see what screen two, if that shows up. Uh, like to record sure. Oh my God! There's so many rules. Clever Fox would like to record this computer screen. Oh my God! No, guys, I'm not. No. I go no. hit screen one. Okay, uh, and then I hit a. But now it's going to be you guys. So let me pull this up in front of you guys. Hit allow. I'm going to drop you guys down. Can you guys see that? Is anything showing up? No. Yeah. Yeah, no That's excellent. Wait. Oh, no. Something should show up for AJ, and then AJ, I think you'll click it yeah. to bring it up. Yeah, I'm not getting anything on my end. Browser can't access your screen. Okay, uh, never mind. We tried. <laughs> we failed. Hi, we tried. tried. You, you know what the worst part about YouTube is? Like, we don't have a lot of people watching right now, but nine people just watched us all collectively fail. That. <laughs> like, that's enough people that if we were all in a room, it would be very uncomfortable. Wait, <laughs> well, hang on. I can show it to you on my phone, and I can hold the screen up to my screen, and you guys there. don't want to do it. There we go. Maybe, like, drop the link in the YouTube video when the video is I'm gonna yeah, go you'll have to take my word cool. for it. It's cool. Or, you know, Tom, when they post it on YouTube, just share the image as a comment. Oh, yeah. You could do that. I was talking about a link. All right. So Thanks. I'm going to go ahead and put that in our – the Mailbox it. Mayhem link that is going to be in – uh, the comment section right now in the live chat, and then we're going to add that into the uh, the info for the stream beforehand in the description. So, but awesome. I'm going to be 
like scrolling through pretty much probably as soon as the stream is over because I just I have a new love for this art form now, which awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. I have a piece that I would like to submit. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, bring bring it in closer so everybody can yeah. see it. Make it so, real big, real pretty for us. In the fourth grade, or maybe the fifth, I'm not actually sure. I had to come up with a piece of my face with my interest. So you'll see like a PS2 controller. You'll see like uh, <laughs> skateboarding wheels. Um, I'm not sure. I think that's macaroni and cheese for my hair. Yeah. Nice. Then, yeah. Crayons. I don't know why I had crayons. I'm obviously not good at drawing. I thought you um, just had a burn. <laughs> I don't know. Birthday cake? Mm, is that yes. a fedora or is that a visor? I don't know. I didn't wear hats <laughs> as a kid, so... <laughs> The man your interest. I don't know. I mean, should we just give him the golden nosy now? <laughs> yeah, like, I'm a very nosy winner. I didn't know that was you. I thought they were pizza face from all that. <laughs> oh, it, I mean, you okay. Now here, here first. is. Oh wait, never mind. Actually, that's a different. I was. Uh, I got confused. I have another art piece that uh, I'd like to submit. Yes, please. We need. That's to beautiful. See. You got my vote. <laughs> uh, well, unfortunately, you couldn't get nosies. These are studio pieces because you didn't do it this year, obviously. Uh, it's okay. Oh, it warrants it. That's true. So, yeah, okay. uh, that's some bureaucratic red tape. Okay. So, with this piece, um, mm -hmm. this is called, let me pull it up here Tom Tomato Head. <laughs> that's actually yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> I know, right? I completely forgot that I made this. I'm uh, surprised you still have those from fourth, fourth grade. grade. Were you looking at the original and then, like, that was your interpretation later? I, I don't know. I don't <laughs> think so. I think I made this from scratch. But, like, my favorite part here is uh, his ears are an ear of corn. Ha. Oh, nice. Ah. Dude, I don't know. I probably didn't even know that <laughs> when I made it. <laughs> Can you put it closer to the camera? Yeah. Uh, Tom, Tom, look to my right, your left. Your okay. Uh look towards your microphone. Did you make Tom in fourth grade? <laughs> <laughs> it is Tom. Literally, it's called Tom Tomato Hood. I cannot believe oh! this only won second place. A fourth what? grader made this. It only that, won second that is place. Tom with well, it only gets head. better with age. Yeah, like this would be. I think this is modern art. You know, this going to museum. Yeah, most great works aren't understood in their time. Right. <laughs> it's so, just, yeah. Well, Justin in the fourth grade was a time traveler. Right. That's what I'm stuck on right now. <laughs> and he drew Tom as a tomato head in fourth grade. <laughs> oh my god. My my appearance on this podcast has been foretold. <laughs> <laughs> So, How old were you in the fourth grade? Uh, what year were you in the fourth grade, Justin? Uh, Before we all feel old. We all feel old in a second. Two thousand six. Oh, okay. So, are you thirteen? Sorry. We need the retroactive <laughs> reward from that year. Uh, That's what I was going to get at. Aviators and mustache. I pegged you oh, at like twenty-two. <laughs> <laughs> no. The staff. It's the staff that does it. Oh, oh it's fixed. <laughs> you were in the fourth grade for 12 years. <laughs> All right. So while we're we're going to wrap up the discussion of the movie right now, to, uh, tell us about where everybody can find the movie. And actually, I had one actual other question is uh, right now, I, I know from talking to the people that um, you've been – inquiring about festivals and stuff like that is that still on the horizon or is pretty much right now where it is the end game uh what as far as like oh movie festivals uh we're, we're oh. still we're still submitted into a few that are like that rolled over from this year because they were canceled or postponed um you know we we our, our experience with festivals was a really weird one just because of covid um, i mean basically i mean and uh Actually, this this is this is a good sec. Joe, do you have your art bag with you? I do. Yeah, actually, I was waiting. So Joe and I, uh, we actually made a a uh, what what would you call it? A a um, an agreement. An agreement. Yeah. A pact? I don't know. A pact. That's that's a cooler word. I think I said uh, this is gonna happen. This was what. It, this yeah. 
we we submitted so deadlines for festival submissions last year started around uh december of 2019 so that was for like the ones yeah. that were taking place this year and so when we made our first festival submissions um joe bought a bottle of uh, scotch with the intention of having a glass for every film festival we got into um right. and by the time we got into one uh uh, COVID was in full swing and I haven't seen this guy, uh, in, in months, um, outside of like, you know, the occasional six foot distance or through a screen. And I said, hi, but you know, um, yeah. so, uh, for my birthday, uh, my girlfriend's dad sent me a bottle of Ardbeg 10 year scotch, the same that Joe had bought for our uh, celebrations. Uh, so we are going to, uh, have a drink. With you all, if you all have yours with you, I mean, and this is like three, but we'll do the we'll do one, uh, and then I'll actually answer your question, Deacon, because that wasn't an answer to anything. <laughs> well, it's getting to that actually. It's getting to that because is this to which one, Joe? Uh, film freeway. Film freeway. Right. Uh, well, yeah. uh, lift off film sessions. That was Thank the first you. first one we got into. So, uh, cheers to that. Uh, that was our only film festival for the year. And it was virtual, and uh, we didn't win anything, but we got in. Hey. That counts for something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that was our first success that warranted a, a, a sip of scotch. Yeah, and our, a lot of the festivals that we didn't get into, some of them were just like, you know, we didn't get in, didn't cut the mustard. That's fine. Some emailed saying, yeah, because of COVID, this is like early in the year before things got crazy. You know, we are – minimizing the amount of people here. So we're minimizing the amount of films being accepted because the more people get accepted, the more you know, they're going to come with their families, friends, and so on. So we weren't the cream of the crop there, which I mean, I, we didn't expect a lot of like not to beat out these other crazy documentaries or other independent films, not to like cut what we did short. It just, you got to realize. It's just like people do shit like free soul and like, yeah, right. they could have died. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. like. Oh, well. You guys got bumped because like, Barack Obama's movie is in this film festival. We're like, oh, okay. Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> what can you do? <laughs> Competition was steep. Yeah. Um, but so then, you know, we decided to take the alternative route, and um, you know, we were able to get it on Amazon, Which and is and uh, a lot of film festivals were kind of waving that because of COVID. So, like, we know you want to get your film out there, but some weren't. So that disqualifies us from some already, but the whole idea of making this movie, it took so much time and effort. It was like not to go win a prize, which would have still been cool, but the point is to get people to see it. And mm -hmm. see it if COVID is making no one be able to go do anything. So that was kind of our driving decision. I think it was a good one. I mean, we've gotten a good amount of views. I mean, this interview came from that. I'm having a good time. Yeah. Now, these guys might not have ever seen that, if it wasn't for that decision to do it. So I don't yeah. know. ultimately, <laughs> you know, the, the film festival route was looking less and less likely as the year went on. Yeah. Um, and we said, you know what, uh, we're, we, we kept it close to the chest because we didn't want to get disqualified for, for screening early out of festival or whatever. But we said, you know, what? we're just going to self release and whatever comes of it comes of it. Right. Um, so getting on Amazon was the next, uh, the next toast that was, <laughs> So let's let's do that. Hey, yeah. Yeah. we're streaming on Amazon.com in the U.S. and the U.K. Uh, on, on Prime, um, and uh, we have it up on AmericanCaricature.com. You can purchase the movie. Um, it's it's available for as a digital download, um, and so that was the next thing we were drinking to. Is we got our 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 web store up. So yeah. there we yeah. go. Time your pour is so small compared to mine. I'm such a jerk. I'm actually, uh, I'm really about to order one of these trucker caps. Oh, nice. Like, <laughs> so that might be a good one. Have a look for now. <laughs> <We're gonna> <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. My, my 2020 look has been a trucker cap with a suit jacket. Like a suit yeah. jacket. Okay. So you're telling us we got to put on a suit jacket. Or a tie. I mean, Wear to the wedding or <laughs> <laughs> don't threaten me with a good time. I uh, I manage a perfume shop at a mall, so I like to have as much fun and kind of fuck with people as possible. And right. attire like that, you know, I like to wear a hat that says, Why is that man wearing a sports coat? <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> it's a look. Hey, well, also, I'll, I'll mention this is another uh, avenue of shameless self-promotion is that uh, since Joe here sponsored uh, our ISCACON this year, um, we have a, a discount code on our website, Merch Store. Uh, if you check out with the code ISCACON, you get 15% off any merch. It doesn't apply to the film itself because we couldn't link them to the to the code, but uh, all the all the physical there, merch. Tom, was is there 15% a time on that because of the convention? Uh, I said it to March because it's just it's going to be recurring. We're going to oh, put that okay. discount code in the next magazine. So yeah, it's, it's yeah. If you use it through March, you'll get fifteen okay. percent off all your merch. Nice. So get two hats. <laughs> <laughs> that math checks out. I'm here, AJ. Bye. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm trying. Oh, here. I was looking at the onesie, but I don't have the means to actually put used to it currently. <laughs> <laughs> Keyword uh, currently. You know, if you can dream it, you can do it. <laughs> that is true. That yep. is very true. Long stared at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make it weird, AJ. We just No, I'm not staring at anybody in particular. I'm staring <laughs> at my own awkwardness. <laughs> sorry, sorry, we love you. I think it'd be even more fun if you just buy it and then give it to a random baby. Like you're, <laughs> you're at the mall and someone goes by with a baby carriage. Just, oh, just do real marketing right there. <laughs> I feel like it's 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 one of those gun. Cannons. <laughs> exactly. Uh, now. I like the idea of t shirt gun with the baby onesies. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh, we just lost two of viewers. Just <laughs> <laughs> Didn't like that idea. Yeah. I like now, it. Now, I remember, love that idea. It's a t-shirt cannon, guys. <laughs> you can talk about anything. Oh, we're we're not firing actual cannons at actual babies. We can I, talk about anything. You're just, you know, you're not free of consequences. I'm getting upset. <laughs> this is an entirely a hypothetical baby. scenario. Get a free baby onesie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That kind of a deal. Teach your baby to catch earlier. Whatever. Yeah. It's definitely an option. Yeah. We're throwing it out. I don't know. I don't know how you feel about it, AJ, but we're throwing it out there. Throwing it out into the world. Enjoy so it. we're we're not a movie podcast, probably by any means. I don't know if we define ourselves really with that. But we are all <laughs> movie fans. We're in the movie sp- entertainment news space fandom, if you right. will. Um so what are some of your guys' favorite movies or what were some of the ones that like caught you like at that age uh, or maybe like uh you Man. know i don't know like call like college years for me were like where i really like started really kicking into like movie fandoms so, like whatever years where it was when you had kind of a that fandom what were some of the ones that inspired you or um you liked well real quick side note uh if you were in fourth grade and i was six what was your college years yesterday yeah, <laughs> yeah, but I, yeah. <laughs> As I said that, I was like, I shouldn't be saying that, but I like college well, years. it was I the college years. The college, <laughs> the college years were the two years I went and then dropped out. That's the college I was, years. I was I was on the verge of making a, a joke about how how young you are by saying like, oh, what's your favorite movie from when you were in college? Anchorman. Then I realized, no, you were still in like fourth grade. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you in two thousand three. I just dated myself. Like, yeah. uh, so. Boom. Right. Yeah. Uh, so do you actually answer the question? I remember I took an elective class in high school. Um thought it'd be fun, you know, big into movies as a kid, but didn't know how they applied to me or I applied to them or whatever you want to say. Uh about that time I watched Pulp Fiction mm. and was like, Man, this is not how you're supposed to write a script. I want to do that. Um, that kind of got me into like the dissection of when you like watch a film, at least for me, like I had to watch it twice because I still am a kid when I watch a film, um, specifically like, you know, like Star Wars, like we go to see any Star Wars, I have to see it twice. I'll go with opening day with Tom, like we always have. And I'm just like, and then I'll go again and go, yeah, okay, this didn't work for me or this blah, blah, like, but the first, you're still like, I 40 foot screen, I'm blown away. I don't care what movie it is. Um, I'm enjoying it, at least in that atmosphere. But like Pulp Fiction was up there for me. Um, the Matrix in '99, like what? You can't do that. And it's still like it holds the test of time. Um, and it's one of my favorite like franchises, like you know, Back to the Future. Tom and I are big fans of that. The Lord of the Rings and like Indiana Jones, Star Wars. Tom, don't you have a flux capacitor tattoo? 
He I does. do, yeah. Go off, Tim. Uh, hang on. Let's I see. got a vlog where they mentioned it. Hey, there you go. go. Yeah. I studied for this. <laughs> so actually, uh, you've done your homework. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Mr. The Juice, I guess it goes farther back than high school because, like, I was a kid when I saw Star Wars and Indiana Jones Back to the Future. And those are still up there for like favorite trilogies. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess maybe way back then I just didn't realize like what you know, Jurassic Park, what those did to me emotionally until I was able to like comprehend and dissect them. Right. Um, yeah, and, and 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 for me, it's uh, you know, it was the movies that I have fond memories growing up watching, uh, and and so that's why Back to the Future, like to me, was like. I, it was it was probably the perfect movie to me to see at the age that I was. Yeah. Uh, it was it was I never saw it in theaters, but it was always on TV, and I would always stop to watch it. I was always blown away by the the time travel element, um, and and just uh, you know it was just so fun and and triumphant, and you know as as far as like how silly it could get, it was also real at times. You know, it didn't really pull its punches when it was trying to to you know, uh, really, really get to you. So, I, I mean, that, that movie's always stuck with me, and, and even, you know, now it's infinitely rewatchable, and you can learn something new every time. Um, Jurassic Park was uh, the first movie that I saw, not the first movie that I saw in theaters, but it was the first movie that I remember seeing in theaters going, like, I had no idea a movie could do that. Wow. Uh, yeah. And, and, wow. And, and even today, like, those effects hold up, and, and oh, yeah. like, they serve the story in a way that I don't think most VFX do th these days. Um, and, and, and so it's like, you know, you have Spielberg, you know, just doing his thing and then utilizing this new technology to emphasize it and also cool giant dinosaurs. So, right. you and know, that, that new technology is essentially like the beta version of Photoshop. Like, yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. And that first one looks better than the new ones, if you ask me. So. It absolutely yeah. does. I 100%. 100%. Uh, this this like, new one uh, uh, yeah, looks this. better than past two Star Wars, but that's, I mean, I'm, yeah. a, I'm a puppetronics guy. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I think anything you can do in camera is, uh, I, I won't say all the time better than CG, but uh, it's it's at least it's at least worth pursuing before you move to CG. Um, you know, and, and that's possible. Yeah, I just feel like if, if you can get the the lighting right, you can get the the physical, you know, um, um, effect there in camera. It gives the actor something to work off of. It gives the audience something to connect to. Oh yeah. And I'm a sucker for that. Like I I have like I I grew up like you know my my love of movies always came from a sort of like a visual sort of perspective and a mechanical perspective where I wanted to see how that thing was done. So I remember watching behind the scenes. I never, I didn't see Star Wars until well after I watched the making of Star Wars VHS that my grandparents had laying around that I think came in a box of Cheerios when I was like <laughs> eight. And and I just loved watching them build this world, and I had no idea what I was watching. But I'm like, that's amazing. I hope I get to see it someday. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I, I always love special effects and stuff like that. And um, why we I, have so many in our film. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, well, I, I, you know, I, I, I am in awe of what can be done with them, and I don't uh, necessarily envy the people who are skilled at it because it just cool. seems like long, tedious work. But yeah, then I guess I, I'm, I'm in a profession that also lends itself to long, tedious work, right? Right. <laughs> you, know, you, you find your passion, you roll with it. Well, like practical yeah. effects in film, like I'm gonna try this, the the share screen thing again real quick because it's gonna you know, work uh, is it gonna a friend work of mine, a friend of mine just got me back into pro wrestling oh, um nice. and does anybody here follow wrestling at all wwe like a little oh, bit? okay yeah. joe does i used to but i've, I've fallen off in, in recent years i fell okay. off and then fell back in as an adult when like the like the talent got really good. I would tell Tom, he's like, Yeah, I didn't care about talent or the stories. I just like the characters and like mankind is a wrestle anymore, so I don't care. I'm like, that's fair. <laughs> I mean that that is fair. Yeah, I mean it can't fair. always be attitude era, but it's you know there's still some good stuff these days. I love the entertainment aspect of sports entertainment. Side note, since since you brought up wrestling though, my dad's birthday was uh, last week and I got him a uh, a cameo greeting from Mick Foley, which was uh, pretty cool. Oh. 
and uh, the, he, fact, the fact that Mick Foley is on cameo is amazing. Yeah, right. and <laughs> you know he's he 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 goes all the way. Like he did Mr. Sacco. He put the Mankind mask in. Got into character. Yeah. He sang two birthday songs. One is Mick Foley. One is Mankind. Like yeah. it, 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 it. this thing. You know, you expect a cameo to be thirty seconds long. He went on for like four and a half minutes. It was, yeah. I was just like, wow, this is this is a real production. <laughs> yeah. The Vince Neil one though, the Vince Neil birthday one is the best cameo of all time. Like he's hammered; he can barely say his own name, and it's trying to that <laughs> somebody. I, I have like not seen it. Oh, oh, I need to get one of these. Um, <laughs> but I can't like pull it up. But my my friend who got me back into wrestling was like. Oh yeah, Tom Savini uh, designed the mask for the fiend Bray Wyatt. Oh no and, way! Ah, oh, I can see that. Like when Savini I found that, out, I was like, the "Hell mask. yeah, sign me up!" Yeah. One I, of my uh, that, but... one of my Cedar Point colleagues actually went on to study under Tom Savini at a special effects school in in uh, Pennsylvania, and now she does like makeup effects. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. That's so cool. That's so cool. Well, speaking of like special effects marvels, we, we just learned that there's going to be a new movie coming out. What's this? A remake of uh, a certain old movie, and it's going to start Peter Dinklage as the Toxic Avenger. As the Toxic I could, Avenger. I could not be more excited for this. this I mean, he's got some acting chops, so I'm, I'm, I'm I, I don't think. The, those I had never really seen. I've seen like clips of Tax Adventure. I never sat down and watched it. Um, I guess maybe I should. Oh, yeah. the remake comes out. Oh, this guy, he like this is besides um Tax Avenger, but like um Game of Thrones, he plays these like really messed up looking dudes, but then they kind of make him look kind of normal. So I'm kind of excited for him to like have like a melty eye and yeah. you know be like kind of like a. Mix between Deadpool and Captain Planet, I guess that's what Toxic Adventure yeah. is. Pretty yeah. much, yeah. yeah. Like uh, it's the movie itself. Like it was originally so low, low budget and kind kind of trashy. It was like when they said that they're doing a, a real reboot of it and it's going to be tens of millions of dollars into it. I was against it until you said Peter Dinklage. For some reason, it just works. I'm interested. Yeah, I'm Pete. Well. Just like you were saying, with the idea of like it being a remake, like it, it, with any kind of a budget, almost goes against the spirit of it. But right. uh, right. I, I'm, I, I'd be very curious to see what a trailer to this looks like. Right. Uh, I, I have like no expectations. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just, like, I'll, I'll wait and see. Yeah. <laughs> now here's what happens when no expectations happen. So you get cats. <laughs> oh. Nobody wanted that. I wanted it. No, you didn't. I uh, love that experience. I did not. I don't see love cats. the film. I love the experience. We I saw like, talking theater. about cats at work randomly. Like we're talking about Broadway stuff, and I was like, I've never seen it. I never want to see the theater version. Definitely didn't see the movie. I'm like, so I don't know what the story is about. But I strongly believe that you can tell that story without human cats. I, and I've never seen it. I just feel like there's probably a story you can tell without being weird and creepy. <laughs> so, there is a story. No, there isn't. See, Wait, I've heard otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> there, is, there is technically a through line. There's a framing device. There's not a story. <laughs> there is a thin plot line, but it is a plot line. Okay. Gets you from A to B. Do you guys want the short version, or do you want the meta, or do you want the welcome to my TED talk? <laughs> Please, the short version. <laughs> is a great metaphor for artistic communities and what they do for inclusion and raising each other up. Oh my! You know what else does that really well? The last act of American caricature when you go to the Iskacon. Yeah, it does that actually way better. Oh my. I got it, Tom. I got it. Nice. Um, I, le I learned from all your shameless plugs how to do one. <laughs> and Mick Foley. Mick Foley talking. Yeah, Mick Foley, the king. Yep, he pops. Right here in Cleveland. Are you, really, are you really trying to say that is what Cats is about? Right? Yes. <laughs> all right. It's about all about well, it one person my curiosity. Up, one person is raised up, 
and it wasn't the person that was actually. You know what? Let's let, let's say for the actual cats episode. <laughs> so bring, I just lost two viewers to again. Bring, <laughs> to bring, bring you guys, back. Yeah. Bring them back. To bring so you guys that, into our pain. We talked about that. We, right. we had a we had a cats podcast lined up that we were gonna do, and it fell through. And we all rewatched it in anticipation before. I just realized I'm gonna have to watch it again <laughs> to get ready again for the next time that we ha- when we actually have the cats podcast. And I'm that so just dead. brought the, my mood down a little bit, but uh, and I'll have watched it at least three or four more times for fun. That's got to be bad for your 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 brain. Like that's got to be doing some damage to the the squiggly bits up there. Uh, oh, those bits are already squiggly. <laughs> you think Southland Tales is a good movie? No one knows what Top Land Tales is, except for No, I do. No, actually, I watched that. Okay. Wow. Tom knows okay. what I, I, I was really excited for Southland Tales because I really like Donnie Darko and I like right. the cast. And the first time I saw it, I'm like, wow, this is so artsy and adventurous. And, and I love the, seeing The Rock like this and John Lovitz like this and Kevin Smith. Like seeing them, like, and, and, and Justin Timberlake was awesome in it. But then. I watched it once because I, I, I used to have a habit of just buying uh, DVDs in bulk from like Hollywood Video. Just like, these right, were on right. sale, and then I'll take a gamble yeah. on them. And so I, I watched it, and then years went by. And, and this is actually my first year uh, working at Cedar Point. I had one of my, my now good friends, uh, somehow despite this, uh, had him over. I'm like, dude, you want to come over and watch a movie? I got this really cool one we can watch. And then we put in like all three hours of Southland Tales. <laughs> and I'm get ruined. And he just looked at me, he's just like, so long. Dude, I hate you, dude. And then went, <laughs> this is Derek, by the way, Joe. <laughs> oh, is it really? This is the app I made Derek sit through Southland Tales. Uh, and he was yeah, in yeah, misery the whole time. Ugh. I didn't so realize how much watch it. So that <laughs> film is one that you usually find, like, friends tell you to watch it. Um, I sat through it and watched it with a friend, and I was silent the entire time. And I was like, so what do you think? And I said it is the most self-indulgent, literally masturbatory piece of shit masquerading as art that I've ever seen in my entire life. But he loves it. A week <laughs> later, a week later, I purchased my own DVD copy. <laughs> <laughs> I've only seen it the one time Tom was talking about, like when he watched the first time, and I really don't remember it at all. Except that way, honestly. Don't, don't go into your memory. All, all I remember is The Rock is in it. That's all I remember. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would, it's I would the say low, I, lowest grossing theatrical release film with Dwayne the Rock jo- Johnson in it. <laughs> it, you know, it, it's. I feel like I it was. It was, a, it was a good first viewing. It was not a good second viewing. It's like it was like reheated French fries, like <laughs> you know. <laughs> And, and our, our, they, they were great uh, at, at like 2 a.m. when you were drunk and they were fresh and hot. But then the next day, like in sober daylight, you're like, what? What was I? What was I thinking? <laughs> this did not age well. We do a series called Drunk Reviews. So uh, we were watching it drunk. And because we watch it drunk, I take notes because I'm drunk and I'm not going to remember things very well and, unless I take notes. At a certain point, I was like, screw it. Like, I was just not taking it. <laughs> I can't, I can't do, like, I don't know what's happening in this movie. And I just kind of threw caution to the wind. And you know what? I'm not mad about it because it was too, it was way too much effort. So uh, that's kind of a a good segue. Uh, We've uh, been talking about this and uh, it's going to happen this week. Actually, this Thursday, we're going to move Drunk Review to this channel. Oh. This week, we're going to be watching Teen Witch. Nice. (laughs) Very excited. I don't think Brandy's in the chat tonight, but Brandy, this one's for you because you suggested yep. it. So it's, it's happening and but I can't wait for her to watch it. Officially, Drunk Review is moving to What the Show channel. So starting this week, there's not going to be a set schedule for these, but here and there we'll put them up. It's, when the wind it's, it's whenever we whenever we get drunk. <laughs> and we want to review. Uh, do, do you get drunk over the course of the review or do you, do you like... No, we walk drunk like drunk history. We watch the movie and get drunk during the movie, yeah. then we immediately review it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah that's it's not like a watch along. So the, the reviews, well, we've done them on my channel. If you want to find some of the old ones, they're on just Mike Deacon channel. 
Uh, my Mortal, Mortal Kombat is a fan fave. Ooh. I have quite the rant. Mortal Kombat Annihilation, she ranted for 29 minutes. Oh, yeah. I, have, <laughs> I had a long talk with you. I have a deep confession that I've been... Haven't been able to reveal. Uh -oh. I have never seen Teen Witch. No, I have never <laughs> seen Mortal Kombat. Oh man! What the actual fuck? Drop him from us, you dude. Now. Trust me. You have to. It's watch been it. on my like watch list since like 2014. Six I years. That. It's just never come across. He was on services. When it came out. Is it on Netflix? <laughs> I think it's on Netflix I, now. I want is you to it really? watch. I think it is. I want you to watch Mortal Kombat, and then immediately after watch Mortal Kombat Annihilation, and and just compare and contrast. Did, oh. Like <laughs> did that? Did that? Like, but, yeah. Like, like, so first of all, honestly, Mortal Kombat is it's like I don't want you don't build it up because like he's gonna watch it like what are they talking about? No, no, no. I I have got my expectations. I've been hearing about okay. this movie for six years. Okay. I've been hearing. Both I views wanna, I, of like, I, I, I enjoyed it. The movie of all time. The of it, but I'm also like, that's I'm a huge Mortal Kombat fan. So like, I'm weird. Like, I'll I'll, I'll play the storyline, and my wife's like, "You're the only one that likes Mortal Kombat for like the mythology behind it." You can tell me like, no. who, who this person's like enemy was 20 years ago. I'm like, yeah, I love the mythology. I'm that way too. Me and Joe both have the new Mortal Kombat. We've never played each other in it. We're just <laughs> we just wow. play in our own separate rooms. <laughs> I, I, I only watched Mortal Kombat this year, like a few months ago. So it quarantine was, got her to watch it. Yeah, yeah. the dude that plays Liu Kang and uh, Shang Sun are really awesome, though. I actually I want to okay. revisit it. Um, and, and, like here, here's here's how you should temper your expectations. I want to revisit the first Mortal Kombat movie. I never want to see Annihilation for as long as I live, unless <laughs> I have to like. <laughs> I always want to give you a spoiler for Annihilation because it's so bad. One scene, I just want to tell you. But I don't. Uh, I want you to don't. Experience. Don't just. Yeah, just. Just watch it. Like just. You know, <laughs> I, I, I right, bet I just, you'll be like that was the scene Joe was talking about. Okay, yeah. here's the spoiler. When 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 they come out of the outward por portal and Jack says they felt like he'd been microwaved, that's what 2020 has been like for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> so when I most recently rewatched that movie, I felt that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I will rewatch it. They they actually just released like three new skins for MK11 of the the original Mortal Kombat cast. So Johnny Cage, Sonya, and, and Raiden are all uh, uh, skinned to their actual actors and and have their their voices to it. And when they released Shang Tsung in the game, he was he was actually modeled and voiced by the original actor from the film. So it, it has some ties to that, and that's been kind of cool seeing that. And I'm just like, yeah, that's cool. I I, and I, I like playing as a version of. Sonya, that's not voiced by Ronda Rousey. Yeah, so uh, that's exciting too. Uh, uh. So, did you guys ever grow up? Uh, no, we're yeah, we, we're all an esoteric. <laughs> there you go. Oh, um, that's a one. Disney <laughs> Channel original <laughs> movies. That's probably on sale at Black Friday Walmart right now. I'll go get it. <laughs> Which so Disney Friday? Channel original $7. movie? Okay, what was the, what was the question? I didn't, I didn't hear you. Uh, is anybody familiar with any Disney Channel original movies? Any? Uh, maybe. What do you got? Yeah. Johnny Tsunami. Yeah. Uh, oh no. man, that's what I saw. The granddad in Johnny Tsunami is Shang Tsung. Oh wow, I believe it. The only thing I call him that in the entire Trunk review because I had seen Johnny Tsunami before. <laughs> I that. So I was like, Johnny Tsunami. Yeah, it yeah. me the entire time. I was you have that connection. I, I get it. <laughs> it's one of those things that I found out this past year, and then it changed my life, and it makes both those movies entirely different viewing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes sense. I do highly recommend Johnny Tsunami, a classic Disney Channel original movie. I got Disney so, Plus. We'll see if it comes up. So it's, on, it, it's on Disney Plus. Uh, so Johnny Tsunami. Um, Guess what extreme sport it's about. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like I've seen it, so I'm not going to guess. I feel like I already know. Surfing? Uh, nope. Snowboarding, bitch. Snowboarding. But, <laughs> the thing is, but, you know? but that's the thing. Is see, so Johnny moved from Hawaii 
to basically, I don't know, some cold place. Um, and so he then picks up snowboarding. And that basically is the plot of the movie. Aspen. Terrible, but it's for some reason I don't know. You are talking about tsunami now. All of a sudden, I'm thinking of um, what was it called? Oh my god, uh, three ninjas. Oh, oh. three ninjas. I don't know why. Well, what about surf ninjas? Though? You're like perked up at that. <laughs> <laughs> you have some. Do you have some thoughts? Rocky, Colt, and Tum Tum. Yeah, three oh. ninjas. <laughs> yeah, I watched that one a lot. Oh, <laughs> that was, that was in my fun. library, my local oh. library. Oh, yeah. Surf Ninja is a different movie. Surf Ninjas is different. Surf Ninjas <laughs> is a different movie. That yeah, involved. Uh, Did that one have Hulk Hogan in it? Uh, no, it had Leslie Nielsen, uh, Nielsen in oh. Samurai Armor, though. Oh my god! And it had Rob oh, Schneider oh, as a. Oh no! And, and the Sega <laughs> Game Gear. Like I know. <laughs> listen, I love Surf Ninjas. Oh. On I rock. <laughs> No. So this is a movie podcast. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we use the term. We use that term. Yeah. Yeah. Is now. Like, as much as I love movies, I feel like I don't watch enough of them. Yeah. Well, and I actually, think that's that was, kind of, that was kind of the problem with 2020 because, like, I love, like I said earlier, I love going to the movies. So I like, mm -hmm. I love like animated movies. But like both Tom and Julie, uh, my wife, she like, they'll make fun. Like, oh, you know, Pixar movies are great. You don't see enough of them. I'm like, yeah. I, I rather watch them at home because I, I wouldn't rather, but like they're always competing against something I want to see, even if it's a bad movie on a big screen. Right. Um, so one of my resolutions this year was to go to a, a movie every week, even if I was by myself. <laughs> so like, and that I went, so... I went six deep, and that was about it. Uh, one of the last ones I saw, I was with Tom. We saw Sonic the Hedgehog. That was our last one. That was our last movie. Uh, <laughs> I would have known. And the Oscar um, goes too. So that's that's how that ended. But then then things started opening back up, and I uh, I felt like I had to do something. It was in my soul to go see this in theaters and IMAX. Uh, Tenet. I saw Tenet. Chris no, Nolan. No, 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 nope. We don't talk about Nolan. Nope. <laughs> Just gonna go ahead. I've never heard of it. On this show, uh. where we're not allowed to discuss Christopher Nolan. I don't know why. Well, listen, I did not see Tenet. Uh, I I decide I'm deciding to wait till it comes out on streaming in in uh, a few weeks. But I uh, didn't want to talk about Nolan. <laughs> well, you guys may not know this. Joe and I were extras in a Nolan movie. We we went to uh, Pittsburgh to shoot a scene for The Dark Knight Rises, where they blow up the Steelers Stadium. So we were we were the fans in that audience. So no, we were all of them, all the fans. Yeah. Yes, yeah, they wow. just they just copied and pasted us yeah. millions of times. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, yeah, we were there when they blew up the field. We were there when that little kid sang the national anthem. We were the first ones to hear what Bane's voice sounded like, and it was crazy. It was, we didn't like it. And Christopher Nolan filmed <laughs> us on an IMAX camera, so yeah. there were only like three in the world at the time. Yeah. And as so, a Cleveland Browns fan, it's the only time I was ever in that stadium. <laughs> and you got to see it get blown up. Well. And like time of day, up was beautiful. So, well, we don't know well, I guess well, I wish I knew who that director was. Yeah. Now, now that we've ruined like the podcast, it would have been a great story. <laughs> yeah. I thought AJ was disappearing for theatrical reasons, but he's been gone a minute. For now, I'm just <laughs> like lost in that. Take He's like, this is the far. perfect moment for a bathroom break. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, segue, when you're talking about football fields blowing up, uh, what about that uh, that charity going on around there for uh, Watson? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice segue, by the way. Uh <laughs> <laughs> this is a podcast, though. You're very good at this. So, I got to say, like, the past two weeks, I've become a fan of Lions fans. Like, not the right. team. Oh, yeah. And, you know, if I don't want to like cut you off, Deegan, but I feel like there should be some backstory. Uh, yeah. You and I are Browns and Jets fans, so yep. we are usually uh, always miserable. Yeah, always. So we, we get it. We get we get it. You know, we get the Lions heartbreak every year and 0-16. Uh, mm -hmm. and, but anyways, continue. So I just want to put that out there so everyone knows that how how far how down the hole we are. Heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. Yeah. But so two weeks ago, uh, news came out that the Jaguars had you know, they made a trade. They traded Yannick Ngagwe to the Vikings, who then subsequently traded him to the Ravens. 
there was some kind of weird language in the trade that if uh, Yannick made the Pro Bowl, that the Vikings would have to send an extra draft pick to the Jaguars, but then he got traded to the Ra uh, Ravens and got good. So the Jaguars fans realized this was happening and started voting him into the Pro Bowl like gangbusters. Then the Lions, Packers, and uh, Bears fans realized that they could fuck over the Vikings fans. <laughs> started voting for him too so That's just so pettiness just to fuck over the vikings he's getting a shitload of pro bowl votes <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. but then the same fan base the lions they lose their their uh thanksgiving game if you saw it to the houston who's terrible yeah, like, bad. annihilated by them and then they finally fired their coach and their gm so the fans to thank the Texans for making this happen have been donating money, uh, thirteen dollars <laughs> each, to the Sean Watson charity because that's how many wins Matt Patricia got them in three years as a coach. I respect that. Yeah, so, uh, sorry, the internet people are, uh, no offense, kind of horrible, but in a very kind of funny way. Um, the fact that they were like happy that you know the coach lost his job and they're donating the amount of dollars of his wins is such a Jets Browns thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like I I can relate because when uh they got rid of uh I don't know any of our coaches uh, <laughs> Which recently, one uh, when 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 Greg took over uh two seasons ago before mm -hmm. we had kitchens and he was a coordinator and he took over and we had more wins in like half a year than Jackson had his whole career. Right. And then they decided to not use him as the head coach. I was like that's the brownsiest thing you can do. This guy yeah. gave the most wins since like 06. And you're like, no, we're going to go yeah. to this other guy that's never done we're this. We're going to go to the other coordinator. and <laughs> Yeah. You know, I'm not going to act like this whole thing isn't completely over my head because it's it's not my area of expertise at all. But you guys are talking about pettiness. And it just, it just the whole thing stinks to me of the time. I believe it was 2016. This is the year the uh, – uh, the uh, Indians went to the World Series, nearly won the World Series, and the Cavs won the title, and uh, uh, the Browns won nothing. Right. The Browns won nothing, and Cleveland uh, hosted a, uh, right. a, a parade for their their uh, no-win year. And uh, I did not attend. That, I did not believe in it. There was Joe, only like 200 people who showed up too, which was even better. Joe, was that hurt better. Joe's soul, but I laughed again. I just admired the audacity at it of it, and that's just something I keep well, coming you know, back there's, to. There's, there's, the trains of thought, actually. there's two trains of thought. You can you can admire the audacity of it. Like, look at the balls on these people. The other thing you can think of too, though, is like Cleveland. We're a fan base, so you can't fuck with us. Right. And they're like, you know what? We win no games. We're still gonna have a parade because. <laughs> I mean, we don't care. It's February. It's cold out. We're gonna be. Well, that's the thing. I love. I just love the commitment to it. They didn't just yeah. say they were gonna do it. They said, yeah. "Well, we're we're doing it." They had to get a committee. <laughs> they had to get permits. Like it wasn't the city didn't hold it. The fans held it. Like right. that's <laughs> that's wild for a team that doesn't need it, but gets it every year. Say about Cleveland fans and like like Browns fans. Um, is they, yeah, they're not fair weathered fans. Like wow. I bought a bandwagon team, whatever. And I was like, Cleveland loves Cleveland, no matter yeah. if they suck, which is most of the time. Which, you know, well, Cleveland isn't even known for fair weather. So, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I think you're talking about 2020 a few times. The scariest thing about 2020 is Browns as the number one seed for the wild card. So that's right. Armageddon. What's <laughs> they need to win like one more game and they're going to make the playoffs. Which is well, right, if we were to play us right now, we'd be the number one wild card. We're not going to get our division because of Steelers are undefeated, but right. just the fact that we're eight and three and in the playoffs, if it went today, right? Although there's a hard road ahead, but uh, it's still so like it's exciting. The Giants in 15 and the Jets in 16, you're fine. Yeah. That's true. That's that's <laughs> the division that no one wants to win a football game. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, at least you're not, you know, a Jets fan this year. So there's. Hey, hey, we have we have a light at the end of the tunnel. Is that? And his name is Trevor Lawrence. I don't. So. <laughs> I don't know if a quarterback alone can save that team. You need a little. You need. I don't know. Tom Brady leaves the Patriots. Look at them. Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess that's true. Pretty awful. But you do need maybe a coach that can coach yeah. the quarterback to win. Some it's games. not Adam Gase. 
That's all I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Why does AJ come back and look like so? Like he, you all right, buddy? Wow. I'm good. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just like, Adam right. Gase. The the name Adam Gase just makes me cringe. Oh, okay. It's okay. Just <laughs> Uh, yeah. the, name, the sound of that name just makes me how is he the only coach that everybody thought was going to be fired that's still left standing because they're tanking they don't want to win a game they want to throw the season to get the number one draft pick this is what I don't understand about the NFL and I will never understand about the NFL is like all the, the, the semantics of that like college football it's I don't know well, it's like you they they choose you and then mm-hmm. in the nfl it's like you choose them and so it's very hard for me to wrap my head around but i try i do i do the fantasy i watch the hard knocks I try. <laughs> I, well, I think the the season. i'm not huge in college ball but i think the biggest difference is how they're run as businesses mm-hmm. where the college choose you because you can't as a player and this is actually kind of like controversial but like you can't get paid because you're getting a change, which that's fine. But you're not allowed to get paid with endorsements or anything else. But the NCAA is making an insane amount of money, money, money off you, mm-hmm. and you can't even like, hey, Nike wants to give me a shoe deal, and why what? not? Why why can't that's your name? Like, Absolutely. And there's so many of these these college athletes that like when I was in college, they were. Like we would take them out to dinner because they were broke as hell because they couldn't work because they were, yeah, you know. they had to study and play ball and study film for ball and all that stuff, and they don't they can't get a job. But they can't pay, but the university's making anyway. <laughs> NFL, the whole, the whole, the other the whole, way, the way around, we we're like, they want to right. make money as a team, so they want to pay you to be the best you you can be and be an all star. Of LeBron James or whatever, and get a championship. Yeah. No, which is why he LeBron James college. was smart for not going to college. No, that's true. He said yeah, that he he to college, but if he gets injured, he can never play again. Right. Yeah. Make your money when you can. You can, you can go back at forty two if you want. Like whatever. Oh, it'd be great if just like when five years from now we see college. like LeBron James at Duke <laughs> as a freshman. <laughs> No, he that's how he retires as he plays college ball. All right, here's a question. <laughs> what would his major be? Like most of them, underwater basket weaving. Oh, no, wait, he's already made his million. So I guess maybe something serious. I'm I think sure. he does want to go into film, though. So he might actually study yeah. film. Well, and he wants to take over, like his production company wants to take over the Friday the 13th franchise, which yeah. I think is awesome. Like there's so many so, like African-American creators going into horror and producers and, and i i love that you know dude i i do y'all see uh lovecraft country not yet no. I'm not. I'm that, so that show uh, is is wild it has some of the best special effects i've seen on just on a, on a horror tv show uh it's it's nearly incomprehensible but i think that is in, <laughs> in line with the theme of lovecraft but it, it's it, it, it was it was it was fun while it lasted. So I I, I think yeah, check it out and, and make up your own minds. But that, that was yeah. a cool show. I'm just excited for Jordan Peele having his hands with like a new Candyman. I'm kind of excited for that. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, that'd be sweet. And uh, Chris Rock with Spiral, the Book of Saw. Like that was one of my most anticipated movies of this. Yeah, I'm pretty curious for that because Chris Rock's taking some new roles on that aren't anything like Chris Rock. <laughs> Nothing and like they look, but they look I'm great. Very yeah. interested. I just yeah. finished just today finished Fargo season four, and he was pretty pretty excellent in it. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what he does with the Saw concept. Yeah. Uh, I, I won't say I'm really thrilled about the the idea of a new Saw movie. I kind of gave that up like after Saw three, but I still think that went every year. This, this, we did, we did, and I was disappointed every year. But <laughs> <Me too. laughs> I, the first one was really good. The first one was really good, and I really liked the second one. The good. third one, uh, but when they brought Carrie Elwes back, like it was almost good enough. Uh, in, right. in the seventh one, like it was, it was too little, too late. Like, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. It, but yeah, it was I almost good. I took it over. No, you didn't. It doesn't make sense. Uh, yeah, they're just like, here, here's your fan theory, and we're like, oh, yeah. okay, you guys didn't put any thought into this. 
<laughs> well, what Tom, though, I'm curious. What I'm curious about is like the little bit we've seen of uh, Spiral, the Book of Saw, uh, whatever. It, the vibe I get, it reminds me of like Seven. Yep. Yeah. Actually, Chris Rock reminds me so much of Morgan Freeman in Seven that it's kind of a little weird. But, but I'm like, excited though because Seven is awesome. Yeah. I, I hope it can take some of the the concepts of Saw without like I, I think what happened. Or, like I think Saw lost its path when it it leaned too much into the torture porn sort of like flavor oh, yeah. of the month sort of mm -hmm. vibe, and it was one, all about how violent you can right. be. But the the first movie isn't that at all. Like yeah, the first good. movie has that, but it's not. Yeah, not right. You don't see anything. The first movie, you don't see anything. Everything's yeah, plot. yeah. And the first it the first movie is a really like, tight thriller. Yeah, it yeah. reminds me very much of like a Hitchcock film in a way, uh, just kind of spun differently, but like. You know, he's in the room the whole time, controlling everything. That's like so Hitchcockian, where like he, the, the auteur is in the room, like controlling everything, and you think it's this guy or this guy, and really it's the dead guy the whole time. Like, yeah. yeah. yeah and by the time he got into the third movie, and and everything are just these these massively elaborate mechanical contraptions. Like, like the, the more the more pieces to the puzzle, like the more people you have in on it, yeah. like the less believable it becomes. Well, like, well, we had to hire this construction crew to build this mechanical crucifix. Yeah. And, and like, <laughs> I, yeah. you kind of lost me there. Okay. And also too, like after three, like he was dead. Like they're all flashbacks. Like, yeah. like what the hell? He spent one year with cancer and he made a giant crucifix by himself? Like The fourth one I like. The fourth one took place at the same time as the third one and you didn't realize it one. until the end. Three, oh, four, right. Five, yeah. Five, so, five, like, well, so, fifth one loses points on creativity. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, whoa, well, that worked. We'll do that again. <laughs> yeah, because like they had the, the swap cop, they had the the protege, and then they had, I don't even know, somebody else, but it was all happening at the same time. Oh, the detective. The detective, that's the other protege. Yeah, that's when I really started to lose interest. I'm like, I don't care about this guy. Yeah. Like, and then like the bad guy at the end, it's like, he's a cop the whole time, then reveal, I'm like, oh. Yeah, you know, like, I don't buy anything about this. Yeah. <laughs> so, after, since we destroyed that franchise, what else is next? <laughs> While we're ready, Chris Rock will LeBron see. James. Horror tangent. Just let. Now we're back to LeBron. Let's make him Jason. Let's let's just do it. I don't know. He's, he's producing it. Yeah. Let's just let's it's put him in the Oh, it's on the schedule still. I can't even. I can't. It's, even it's, well, the entire franchise is wrapped up in litigation. Apparently, um, that's why there's problems like the Friday the 3rd 13th video game and streaming rights for like half of them. Uh, it's all about who gets the money. It's all fan films now, too. Like, there's a thousand yeah. films there's, on the 13th, and they're not there's good. some good ones. Like, no. I, 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 I don't know. I've, I've kind of like, uh, I've while we're randomly dipping our toes into horror, just real quick off the top of your head, what's your favorite horror movie? Evil Dead 2. Ooh, favorite horror movie. Which is, I mean, that's Evil Dead one my better. Uh, <laughs> that, that's how I feel about it. Not a sequel. It's not a sequel. It's the same movie, but it is pretty much. So I, I've got a one A and one B, and it's uh, the thing and the platform. So Evil Dead and Evil Dead Two. The, the the platform, the new the newest plat like the platform on Netflix. That one. Yes. Really. Spanish, Spanish language. Yeah, it's it's a great thriller. It's got some great horror elements that are kind I'm of terrifying. A, I'm um, assuming you mean the John Carpenter's the thing, not the yes. old one. Uh, not the thing from outer space, not the 2011. Although the the, the prequel was, was yeah. Well, no, there was, was one. The John Carpenter one's technically a remake. A remake, yeah. Title, but the the thing from outer space. I yeah. never. The the yeah. John Carpenter the thing. Um, that one that one's up there for me. That's a good one. Like, um, do you guys have you guys played Among Us? Because it just it reminds me so much of Among Us and so much of COVID. I have not. <laughs> I've been invited to play a couple times. I haven't uh, uh, dug into it yet. It's <sighs> it's what is happening, Juice? Juice, are you I'm, like? I think I'm, Juice is pulling out his like. I'm coming for my favorite horror movie. Oh, oh nice. I'm like trying to think about it. Coming asshole. 
<laughs> I, I, I agree with AJ. I think the thing is up there. Uh, you can argue the first Alien. It's like a sci-fi horror. That's really good. Yeah. That yeah. Does it for me. I'm just gonna list up like a handful. I don't really have a favorite favorite. The original Halloween. Uh, mm -hmm. All the horror guys, like slasher guys. I think Michael Myers is my favorite. Yeah. Um, I just the movies in general, the franchise in general is better than the other popular ones. Um, the only good uh, Freddy ones is one in seven, in my opinion. The rest are just New like, Nightmare. Oh, happy. Oh, so. yeah. Um, Freddy versus well, I was, Jason. Yeah, I, saw, I saw Psycho. The one. My grandma. Right. And I thought that was really cool, even though I didn't get at the time why it was scary because it was old. You know, as a kid, I'm like that's just old. That's not scary. But then rewatching it later, I was like, oh, that's that's really creepy. That's that's really creepy. Cool. Yeah. I can't what are we looking at? This it's not my favorite. It's just one I came across. Um, what is it? It is Green Room. Oh, the I Patrick got Stewart. And Patrick Stewart's a I Nazi or whatever. whatever, whatever but really it's, it's uh like a punk rock band is like playing this gig yeah. and they're like having a good time. They're getting ready for the gig and they find out like Nazis run the run the club or whatever and they get stuck and trapped and yeah. shenanigans I'm ensue, intrigued. but yeah, I didn't know what it's about and it was kind of like a way you but... could possibly put that <laughs> like who <laughs> yeah I think those are my top ones off the top of my head I guess so so horror I got uh maybe a couple and they're all kind of like they all harken back to like the 70s or 80s um and I got two two sort of uh uh like schools of thought when it comes to horror you either gotta like go all in on the horror and nail it or you gotta go oh, sure. in on the tongue in cheek and just be goofy um and and as yeah. far as the ones that i feel go all in on the horror and nail it um you know the ones that scared me most as a kid and i feel still hold up are uh the amityville horror uh poltergeist yes. Yes. Um, and uh, what was it called what was the other one? i had one more in that in that line up there but i i i, I believe you were over my house yeah. I think I made you watch both of those. Oh yeah, I, I discovered horror sleeping over Joe's house at like the third grade. Like he's like, it's like, hey, you want to watch this movie? My your mom won't let you watch. And, and we, I remember watching <laughs> Tales. From it wasn't a porno. X Files, nope. right? Like um, I watched The Exorcist when I was like nine years old. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. So um, that, and then then you do the the uh, the sort of um, the tongue in cheek ones. Um, in the woods. So yeah, cat. Uh, uh, great one, great one. Oh. Uh, uh, oh, what was the? Uh, oh, um, Shaun of the Dead is up there. Oh um, yeah, yeah. And, and you, that's, that's where I put. Yeah, that's where I put yeah. Evil Dead. Um, but yeah, um, I, and, and so I feel like you either got to be like really. And one of one of the the more recent horror movies that actually like scared me, and I consider probably one of the better ones to come out in recent years was uh, It Follows. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. I really love cool. that one. That one freaked me out. That was pretty creepy. And the thing is, too, like, there's so many levels of horror. So I feel like that is more of, like, a creepy movie where, like, I still have, like, emotional withdrawal watching, like, Amityville Horror and Poltergeist. Like, mm -hmm. there's something about it. And, like, I'm not deeply religious, but the stuff with the, the occult and, like, the devil and, like, I don't know. Something about it surely creeps, creeps me out. Um, what about The Omen? Oh, the original one? Oh, yeah, it's, right, up yeah. there. It's, it's up there for the remake's me. not good. I didn't even bother watching it. But the original one, like, that one's really creepy. Yeah. Um, the, just the end shot where, like, he just looks over his shoulder and smiles. It's just, you know, the world's just fucked. Mm -hmm. You know? Oh. Um, and, then, and to that effect, too, like, Rosemary's Baby. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, oh, that, that one is a That one is a deeply disturbing movie. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Well, like you said, you either got to go all in or, you know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I forgot about some of those. There's like, they don't necessarily come to you right away. But yeah, they were, like, like Tom said, Poltergeist and Amityville Horror, though, they've always kind of creeped me out. And that movie, Amityville, or Poltergeist, is PG. Because they didn't have yeah. people 13 at the time. I'm like, this is PG? What the heck? They're literally dead bodies coming out after them. That's, right. It's in And Beautician and the Beast, like, Fran Drescher, God, that was terrifying. <laughs> okay, so I have my one that's like, rumor has it, it's this movie, uh, it has Kevin Costner and Jennifer Aniston. This is my actual, like, it's the scariest movie. Um, 
So Jennifer Aniston's family is the uh, the, like the Mrs. Robinson family from The Graduate, right? And Kevin Costner is the other guy. It's like they're the true story people. And then he finds her as the granddaughter, and they have a romantic tryst. And like at, at one point in the trailer of this movie, even they mention this isn't the graduate, it's deliverance. No, it, it's even worse. It's kind of like a version of Pleasantville. I've seen this movie. It's, it's like a version of Pleasantville <laughs> where the, the protagonist realizes that they're in the movie and they don't want to be in it and they want to escape. It is a pure horror movie <laughs> disguised as a rom com. It's okay. horrible. It's a bad movie, but I don't know if I'd say it's horror. It's what? oh my. What's it called? Rumor, Rumor has, has it. it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know it, that description is interesting to me. You, you guys is. ever? Uh, you, you guys? I'm assuming have seen Stranger Things. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, so see, season one, um, before, uh, you know, and, and I don't want to, like, spoil it for people who have yet to watch the series, but um, one of my favorite... Season one of Stranger Things. I know, I know. Now, just just in case, one, one, of, my, one of my favorite movie podcasts, uh, which, you know, I, I won't promote on your show out of respect for you all. Oh, no. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I, I love the Slash film cast. So they they, nice. they were talking about Stranger Things a while back, uh, the first season, and they mentioned the whole thing with um, with Steve uh, pursuing uh, uh, what's her name? Um, uh, oh shoot! What, what's her name on the show? My um, sister. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Man. Yeah. Uh, brain farting right now. Um, Nancy. 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 Yeah. So, the way Steve pursued Nancy during the first season of that show, uh, the, the, the reviewers mentioned, like, so this whole time, Steve is in a rom-com, and Nancy is in a horror movie. Yeah. And it isn't until, like, he goes through those motions and gets kind of pulled into that world unexpectedly that he realizes what's actually going on. And I'm like, that's a really cool meshing of genres that I don't think I would have picked up on, on my own until they... They they described it that way. They kind of do that uh, with the in the mall. Uh, was it season three in the mall? Like mm-hmm. with uh, uh, Uma Thurman's daughter, and like you kind of yeah, yeah, you feel oh, yeah. Like, kinda, like rom com but horror. At, I mean, yeah, I, I feel like that kind of pulled it off pretty well, and that was more yeah. I think blatant than the first season. Yeah, and that, that series, you know, to its credit, does does such a good job of developing characters. Like they they use yeah. the, the the serial format uh, uh, very very effectively uh, in making you care about characters and then you know putting them in horrific uh, danger. And uh, I think that's one of the strengths of the show. I could awesome. do an entire podcast two hours on how much I love Stranger Things. So. I thought it was a horror. I would wake up at 3 a.m. when it drops and watch the whole season. Oh, wow. It comes out at 3 a.m. East Coast time. I'm a terrible fiance at the time we were still dating. His birthday (laughs) was October 20th. Stranger Things season two came out October 27th. I requested that before. I'm not full Priorities. I feel like. I feel like he um, understands. His birthday eventually. had a I lovely. Like, I feel like he can understand because he's he's got a lot of his own nerdy things going on. So I feel like he. Yes. Yeah, and he's gonna have another birthday. You can only get the premiere of Stranger Things yeah. once. Stranger Things Two is only yeah. gonna come out on that day. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He's probably yeah. gonna have more birthdays and seasons of Stranger Things. I mean, yeah, that's true. Exactly. Exactly. And if not, <laughs> there will only be so many seasons of Stranger Things. So yeah. I have to. Gotta make sure I, I get them. But yeah, I stay up like all night and I watch them. I I cannot okay. do that. I like it, it's like I yeah. have to watch a show one episode at a time. Like as soon as it starts auto playing, I'm like, nope, because once I get because once I get sucked into it, I'm sucked into it. I don't yeah. want right. like, to nope. resist. Like, I'm very much the same oh, way. I'm like I really can watch a couple. I can watch a couple. My okay. Man, yeah, I. I love the like watching it. Like I'll watch an episode like once a month, even Mad Men, my favorite show of all time. I'm only in season four. Been watching it for six years. Um, (laughs) 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 I'm going to the end, so I'm like, all right, I'll just I'll watch like an episode 
Well, the thing maybe is, maybe twenty two episodes a year. Right. It's okay. I'm on episode time. four, and I've been watching it as long. So. So I mean, the thing is, like Netflix <laughs> kind of ruined that, um, you know, like, episodic feel. Like before yeah. Netflix, even like Hulu, when they have original content, it's every week. And right. it's, it's a different kind of writing than a movie. If you want to make a movie, Netflix and make a movie, which they do. And like, I, I mean, besides recently, I, uh, I rewatched Westworld season one. I haven't watched the other ones, but uh, yeah. my wife's never seen them. And I, I, when I watched it four years ago, I'm like, you have to see this. You're going to like it. And she loved it. We actually watched it in two days and we never binge, binge watch anything, but she was that dude. Into- I, I like this. Westworld will now be the first series that I've watched straight through twice in one year. Right. Like, right. I, my, my point being, though, my point, uh, I don't want to hear any spoilers. I haven't watched two or three yet. Damn it. No, no spoilers. But yeah, I, I, yeah. Just, yeah, so, I like, loved it. The thing is with Netflix, like, I can watch one or two episodes at a time or two to four, depending on if they're a half hour or hour episode. So it feels like I'm watching a movie. After that, like, the, the, the just the pacing is like when you watch a movie, there's three acts. You watch a television show that's a half hour. There's still three acts, but they're ten minutes. So I watch mm. four of those. I'm just like almost in this like time loop, like oh. emotionally. It's like no, I gotta turn it off and go to work or something. Like, yeah, I I personally like having something to look forward to. You know, <laughs> I, I, yeah. I I don't really have like especially now. It's so hard to gauge time and the flow of it in general. So right. at least being like. Oh, hey, there's a new episode of The Mandalorian out on Friday. Right. That at least gives me a target for something to look yeah. forward to. So uh, the three oh, thing and the Mandalorian no, thing are like me of this. Um, so every time when the Mandalorian drops, I I catch it when it releases, and I'll set myself like an alarm and catch it in the middle of the night and watch it. And I don't know if it's because of when I watch it or like the actual style of the show that it reminds me of like the old Xena and Hercules shows that used to be on the middle of the night. I like the Ken Sorbo and yeah. 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 Um, I and I don't remember what worked it. It's so weird. It, like it <laughs> reminds me so much of those shows. Um, and I think it's because I watch them in the middle of the night. Yeah. And it reminds me of like when I was a kid, it yeah. has the same vibe. Dude, yeah. middle of the night is a weird time to be watching TV, and that's not a judgment. That's just straight like things are weird in the middle yeah. of the night. Also, yeah, I remember they were the commercials. I, that you did. Yeah. Yes, yeah. dude. I remember a few years ago, uh, I was I was starting a new job, and I, I was really like excited. And by a few years ago, I mean like fifteen years ago, I was starting a new job, and I was like really like I, I couldn't sleep until I'm like oh, I'll just turn the TV on, and then like suddenly there's like a, an infomercial for like like an eighty four disc CD set of like soul funk from the seventies, and I'm like. <laughs> Yeah, I need to order this right now because this is speaking to me. Like <laughs> 15 years ago, you, you picked up it. your smartphone. No, I know. <laughs> I, had, like, I had a oh, landline. I was like oh. stretching it from the kitchen to my bed. I'm like, you had to press individual buttons to do it. Change your mom's credit card number. Rotary phone. Yep. But yeah, uh, it's like it's like that was the best thing in that moment. And I, I'm like, I never thought about it until now. <laughs> you know, like, but at 4 a.m. on that night in 2006, I was. I was in. Yeah, I have like, was the like horror stories about watching stuff that late. I was just so I'm not. I'm I shit you now. I was talking about this guy like Hercules and Xena and Doctor Quinn today at work and late night television and also the commercials. So like sometimes I'd stay at my grandma's house and hang out with grandma and we like do a movie night and like watch like uh, Big Chuck and Little John or something like that. And grandma being grandma would like fall asleep, but I'm like kidding. I'm up and I'm watching these movies. Yeah, and like, there's on TV so commercials. And I'm like eight, nine years old. And so not at the age where like this would interest me, what I'm about to say. And it's just so awkward. So then like it's 3 a.m. and like the sex hotline comes on. And I'm watching it. I'm like, oh, grandma, please don't wake up right now. <laughs> please, please, God. I'm not. I didn't put this on. I didn't go away. I'm like, oh, thank God. And then like three seconds later, like, no, go away. I don't want to call you. Joe, do you remember what they I did? They always said that they were in your area, but it was always an 800 number. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it was toll free. Yeah, Joe, do you remember what I did the first time I got my own address when I when I started going to college? And I, was like, I was like, yeah. I was like, you know, it was it was like yeah. five years of watching oh, yeah. Comedy Central late at night. I'm like, I'm on a podcast. Like, I'm like, I'm ordering that Girls Gone Wild DVD. <laughs> <laughs> we tell that story. We just tell that story. 
And we lost two more viewers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is a movie podcast, right? Yeah. Those are theatrical release films in some areas. <laughs> Not I don't uh, want to go limited, to those areas. Limited release. Um, <laughs> uh, all right. Well, we just just hit the two hour point, so uh, that's where we usually like to wrap things up. So, Joe and Tom, tell <laughs> you're going to transition out of that. <laughs> Joe and Tom, and tell us what you're, you're up to now and uh, what we can expect to see from you in the future. Yeah. Cool. Um, uh, so, uh, me, I, you, you know, uh, I ended up. Uh, running the organization I was documenting. So, right. uh, yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm president of the International Society of Character Artists. Um, hopefully 2021, you can find me at festivals again, uh, drawing caricatures. Uh, if not, I do, you know, I do drawings from home. So y'all can hit me up. Uh, it's at Tom Parachi art on Instagram. Uh, if you guys want to follow me there. Um, yeah, Joe and I are working on something. Well, it's been mostly Joe because, uh, again, our ability to kind of like connect in the same room has been limited this year. But uh, Joe, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, um, kind of going where um, AJ said like, I don't know, hour and a half ago about <laughs> watching American characters. Like, oh, yeah, and he expected like a dark thing. And so something actually did happen. Um, and after much debate, we decided to leave it out. But, uh, I mean, I guess it's no secret. We've been sort of promoting it a little bit. Um, but a we'll, we'll kind of skirt around some of the details just to kind of leave you, like, tingling for more. But one of the artists we interviewed got attacked by a former employee and was, wasn't sure if he was going to live, die, be in a coma, whatever. And we explore that. And we're working on that now. I've just been uh, kind of having some – editing version of writer's block and it's been kind of like i don't know with covid and work and i switched jobs well positions and a lot of stuff going on personally and no excuse but just like haven't had the motivation which kind of sucks um so i want to tell this story but part of it's like not having my co-storyteller able to like you know and not, that's not, not Tom fault, obviously, but it's like, I've just been like... No, um, Joe, Joe got stuck with the, the hot potato hard drive uh, when, when the, this COVID shutdown started. Yeah. And uh, so he's been diligently working on it. And, and and I couldn't be there the way I wanted to be, but uh, we've been having occasional meetings. No, and it's, kind of it's, and catch it's, up. And that's a, I guess the, they use the, the Marvel coin that everyone uses now, but it's in the, the universe, if you will, of American character. As I said, you'll see an artist you've seen before in American mm -hmm. caricature. Uh, and then, like, I kind of, like, been, when I have the editing writer's block, if you will, I've been, like, kind of, like, brainstorming and coming up with the next couple ideas once I get out of this caricature world. So I've been kind of writing on the side, but my main focus is, like, telling this guy's story. Um, thought it was going to be a short. It might be longer than a short. I, I don't know. I got to, the end of the month, I'm going to pass it off to Tom, and hopefully he can do some magic and inspire me to, like we can, like Tom said, hot potato, go back and forth, drop it off. But it's, uh, filmmaking is not a one man sport, at least not to me. Right. I never thought, I mean, some people can do it and God bless them. I <laughs> don't think that's how I operate. I don't think I always have the best ideas and having at least a person to bounce them off of is a blessing because they're not always the best ideas. And sometimes they are. Sometimes you need the person to validate your self doubt. And sometimes it's like, oh, well, what if you do this? And the more people you have working, the better the ideas. Um, so right now it's just been an army of one, and I just I'm kind of been stuck, unfortunately. But that's what we're working on, uh, a follow-up to American Character. Not a sequel, but, like, a related film. Companion short. Well, if it ends up being a short. It's, it's going to be a companion film. It's, it's you know, yeah. it, some of this took place while we were working on American Character, and yeah. so it did kind of, like uh, – um, because of the severity of it, it did sort of like, and, and the impact on the community, it did kind of like uh, shift the focus of, of how we, we made that movie. And we we just decided it's going to be its own thing. And so we've been kind of, we put, you know, American character um, out there into the world. And now we're focusing on this. And, and like I said, it's something that um, I, I I wish I had more of a hand in in this current uh, day. But uh, Joe's been putting a lot of work in. And then uh, I'm going to, kind of take over and, and see where we left off and see if I can uh, build upon uh, the foundation that, that uh, Joe's developed. So uh, yeah. And, and we were hoping to have it out this year, but this year, you know, 
who, who got anything that wanted this year, right? So yeah, uh, yeah we're, we're gonna keep pushing at it. And so yeah, we do have that in the works, but um, that's that's a ways off still. I will say Whoa. it's not gonna be five more years though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's already done. So like you shot and everything, and we're mere character. Like I don't know, we shot almost for three, not three years straight years, but we picked up more shots at other fairs. And we just kept shooting and getting more good footage. Um, um, but I, I think that I can speak for. I mean, pretty much anybody who's gonna catch us on the replay, and everybody that's on the show with you guys, that um, everything that happens in the process with that new short. Um, we're we're gonna be there for you. Um, I'd you. be rewatching American Caricature tonight if I wasn't <laughs> talking to you guys actually right now because it's it's been such a joy for that film and it's so warm and it's a really special thing for me. That's awesome. Yeah, it's really like anytime someone says that is is definitely a compliment whether it's like Tom's mom or another character <laughs> artist. <laughs> But like the fact that I met you two and a half hours ago, like there's no connection besides like you know I I haven't even seen Deacon in God knows how many years. He but gave me twenty dollars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't know, it just means it, it means a lot anytime someone says something like that. But it's cool hearing it from someone that has no personal connection to you. Yeah. It's like they're not doing it to like you know, glaze over your feelings or what, like you legit watched the movie or, you know, Mike watched it. And he's like, Hey, you should check this out. Maybe we can be in the podcast. You guys watched it and really liked it apparently. And that's, mm-hmm. that's cool. Oh, yeah. like, that's that third tier I was talking about earlier. It's like uh, me and Tom, the community and people out there in the world that we don't know. And that's, that's reassuring. It's kind of really like, I don't know. It's, it's pretty awesome. I think. And Joe, the uh, the Twitter account for your film production, what is it again? Lucky Card, uh, Lucky Card Films, because production is too long. So it's Lucky Card yeah. Films. Lucky Card Films. So uh, anybody catching this on the replay, anybody catching this in the live chat, uh, when you watch American Caricature, tag at Lucky Card Films to let them know that you found them here. Tag at What the Show. Um, and let us know how much you love this awesome experience as much as we did. And if you uh, watch on Amazon, please give us a, a rating or a review or something. I, I want we do want fe- feedback. Like we said, we're working on a follow up, so even feedback now on something's already done is still helpful on future projects. Absolutely. Awesome. All right, Thanks guys. Coming on. Should we call it a night? Yeah. Thank well, you. We gotta say one thing. Hold on. Yeah. Well, next week. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then we call it. Then we call it a night. So, everybody's seen in the chat all night, and we've been saying it with the stream apps and stuff that we've been going towards Smash Cancer. Why don't we bring his buddies on next week? So, next week, Ooh. what the show enters the dungeon, Smash Cancer. We're going to have members of the Schmodown faction, the dungeon on stream. Uh, we've got a few of them confirmed. I'll just name one of them for you. Robert Parker is going to be here, but we've got more. My than Wisconsin that. boy. So uh, yeah, next week, movie trivia showdown fans. The dungeon's going to be here, and uh, AJ came up with a really, really fun topic to talk about. More on that as we come. Nice. Oh yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for having me. Good night. Thank you for having us. Yep.